be asleep at eight. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Lackawanna College, President Dr. Jill Murray, Director of Athletics Eric Larson, and Head Coach Mark Duda, welcome to Scranton Memorial Stadium and Falcon Football. Today's game features the McDougal Technical Institute Bison and your Lackawanna College Falcons. The Bison are coached by Norm Richards and the Falcons are led by the Hall of Fame legendary coach Mark Duda. Oh, okay. The National Junior College Athletic Association and Lackawanna College is committed to the ideals of good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play. We ask all fans, coaches, and players to show respect for the opposing team, game officials, and each other before, during, and after today's game. Persons throwing objects or participating in other acts in conflict with good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play are subject to ejection and prosecution. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. and Lackawanna College is committed to the ideals of good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play. We ask all fans, coaches, and players to show respect for the opposing team, game officials, and each other before, during, and after today's game. Here's your game time weather information. The temperature is 64 degrees. The wind is out of the southwest at 9, mile per hour, nine miles per hour. The forecast is sunny and seasonably warm with only a 10% chance of rain. It is a perfect day for Falcon football. Yes, it is a perfect day for Falcon football. Good afternoon, folks. I'm Tom Ferguson here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel, getting you ready for Lackawanna College Falcons and the MTI Bison, the home opener for Lackawanna College. Two and one on the season, MTI coming in at one and two out of Delray Beach down in Florida. So as we get ready for things and get underway, let's hear what Coach Duda thinks about the team. We got a chance to talk to Coach Duda earlier this year at Falcon Media Day. Here's what he said about what he expects from the Falcons this year. Linebacker number 12, Akeem Snell. Linebacker number five, Tyrese Mills. Linebacker number seven, Harold O'Neill. Linebacker number 44, Niger Reed. And linebacker number three, Dwayne Grantham. Hey, Falcon Nation. Defensive backs number 14, Nasir Dean. Number 33, Bill Hackett. And now the starters for Josh Pardini's offense. Left tackle, number 77, J.D. Nelson. Having some issue here with it. Let's see if we can get Left it to work guard, now. Left number 62, Ben Eisenhower. Center, number 58, Donovan Reiser. Right guard, number 74, DeAndre Towns Blue. Right tackle, number 60, South Candick. Titan. All right, so we're going to try to figure that out, folks. Sorry, we're trying to get the uh, thoughts from Coach Mark Duda from Media Day about the Falcons this season and what he expects out of them. So we'll try to get you that interview here momentarily as we get you ready for the home opener for the Falcons. Coming in at 2-1 and one on the season, they had a miraculous comeback at Army JV. They trailed by 11 points with 6.29 to go in that contest before rallying with two touchdowns, including the big play, a 29-yard touchdown pass from Barry Brown, able to hook up with Colby Young in the left corner of the end zone that gave the Falcons that victory. Lackawanna College coming in just outside of the top 15 in the NJCAA right now, receiving votes uh, to get into the top 15 and maybe with an opportunity here with two wins on the week because of the quirk in the schedule might have a chance to get back into the top 15 in the nation so far. They're led by Barry Brown who has 861 yards passing, nine touchdowns so far this year. He's fifth in passing yards per game in the country at 287, fifth in passing efficiency at 166, and sixth in yards attempted, or yards per attempt at 9.5 per attempt, 
and sixth in passing touchdowns with nine so far. Delvin Palmer fourth in the country in yards per reception at just a shade under 23 yards per catch. And Lackawanna College tenth in the country in time of possession, 29 minutes they're averaging per game so far this year. The 2-1 and one on the season marked due to 180 wins in his career, the winningest active coach in the NJCAA so far this season. We don't know a ton about McDougal Technical Institute, but what we do know is that they are 1-2 and two on the season. This is their first year of junior college football. They actually won the prep school national championship back in 2019. And they have a couple different prep schools down there in Florida, but they jumped up to junior college football this year, and they've got a pretty ambitious schedule. Their first win of the season came against Middle Georgia State. That was the opener. They won that 33-15. to Now, Middle Georgia State is in club football right now, but they pulled off a nice win against them. And guess what? They went right to the head of the class because they took on Independence, who is the number two team in the nation right now. Lost that game 69 to nothing, and then lost to the number one team in the nation, Snow College out in Utah, 84-7. to So they have played some pretty tough teams. They've got some pretty tough teams, as you see Lackawanna College here. They've also got Iowa Western on the schedule as well. They've got a couple other teams that they're playing. They only have two home games this year, so they're going out, traveling to everybody, getting this program started. Norm Richards is the head coach there. He has spent a couple seasons at MTI, was the head coach of the prep team that won the national championship last year, uh, has been with the program pretty much since its inception, obviously, uh, and before that has been a staple in South Florida and in Florida high school and college football for a number of years down there, uh, just mentoring young players and young people and getting them up and ready to go move on to the next level. So that's what they're trying to do out of Florida, and obviously that's what Lackawanna College has done a pretty good job of in their time so far. Coach Duda obviously understands that. But this is the first of three home games this month for Lackawanna College. Next week's the big one. They're home against Monroe College, ranked number 15 right now in the NJCAA. That's next Saturday night. We'll have that game for you here on our Lackawanna YouTube channel. And then later in the month, the last home game of the season against Sussex County Community College. That game on October 30th, a 1 o'clock kick on a Saturday afternoon. We look forward to bringing you that game as well. That should be a fun one between those two teams. And they've got a pretty uh, stout schedule still to come. They travel to the number one team in the nation, Snow College in Division One on November 6th. Lackawanna also travels to the number one team in Division Three, Nassau County Community College, the next weekend on November 13th before ending it down at Georgia Military. Always a tough challenge uh, down there in Milledgeville, taking on the Bulldogs that game, November 20th, the last game of the regular season. And then from there, we we see what happens. This is a big opportunity though for Lackawanna College. Had a couple teams in the Mississippi conferences lose this week that were ranked ahead or ahead of obviously where Lackawanna College would be just outside of the top 15 so a chance maybe to hop back in and still some teams in Kansas that have to knock each other off still some teams in Mississippi that end up playing each other again and will have to knock each other off as well so there could be some opportunity here for Lackawanna College to try to hop back in. Snow College I think is taking on Georgia Military today so that should be an interesting contest something to pay attention to see how that one plays out we're still about 12 minutes away from kickoff here we're going to take a break we'll be back with more it's Lackawanna College football here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel each one of us has a dream the challenge in today's world is how to achieve it now more than ever the case don't fall behind on your dreams or your college education can take your general education classes in English, math, and science locally at Lackawanna College. Our credits transfer to most colleges so you won't fall behind. Call Lackawanna. today to find out how you can stay home, stay safe, and still pursue your college education.
Just believe in yourself the way I believe in you. At the end of the day, everyone just wants a better life. Try making something delicious. Or saving someone's life. Lackawanna College will change the way you think. Change your future. Change your life. This is life changing. This is Lackawanna College. So welcome back to the Lackawanna College YouTube channel as we get you ready for Lackawanna College football. I'm Tom Ferguson. Thanks so much for joining us here on the YouTube channel. We had a wonderful night last night with the inaugural women's basketball alumni game. And we did that in honor of Jasmine Lewis, a former Falcon basketball player uh, that was tragically killed last year uh, in gunfire, got caught up in crossfire in Philadelphia, was about a week away from going to New York to continue her career playing basketball and whatnot. So uh, was very close, obviously, with her teammates here at Lackawanna College, and they uh, rallied together. The alumni came in. We had a good crowd on hand last night at Lackawanna College uh, Student Union and raised money uh, to donate or to give to her family to donate to the charity of their choosing to try to help end gun violence down in Philadelphia. So that was a really fun thing for us to be a part of, certainly something uh, that we were honored to have happening at Lackawanna Col at the Lackawanna College Student Union. This is the first time that Lackawanna College and MTI are playing. Obviously, MTI, this is their first year in junior college football, so they haven't played Lackawanna College before. This is the second opponent already this year that Lackawanna College has not played previously uh, in junior college football. The other team was Iowa Central, who they lost to in the opening weekend, 28-21. to uh, That was a pretty close game, and that's going to be a game, I think, Lackawanna College, if they continue to improve and get some more wins as the season goes on, they're going to keep looking back on. But they did have a nice comeback win against, on September 18th against uh, ASA College. Miami. That was a good looking win. And then last week, of course, a comeback win over Army JV 39 to 35. So that's where we are right now as we step aside for the national anthem. So there's our national anthem, and we're just about ready to get this thing underway between Lackawanna College and MTI, the Bison, out of Florida. As the Falcons make their way out onto the field, carrying the black flag for the black flag defense. Going to be fun to see these guys at home for the first time. The last time that Lackawanna College did not play a home game until October was 2018, where they ended up having to wait until October 6th to get out onto the field. But 
Lackawanna College coming into the contest 24 and 1 in home games since 2015. Their only loss was to Snow last season in the shortened and moved to the spring season because of the pandemic and lost their one of their two games that they played last year in the spring or earlier this year in the spring before they had to shut things down because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So the Falcons are out, jumping around, getting ready for this contest between them and the MTI Bison. And we're bringing it to you live here on the Lackawanna College Falcons YouTube channel. Of course, we've got basketball and volleyball all starting their practices as the winter sports get underway. The football team isn't the only team in action. Actually, volleyball is up and running. They're out in Harrisburg today for a tri-match down there with Harrisburg Area Community College and Raritan Valley. And then the men's and women's soccer team are also in action, a double header. The women underway right now, they've been playing for about an hour, uh, taking on Hagerstown. Women at noon, and then the uh, men kick off at 2 p.m. And uh, we were up at the Lackawanna Student Union getting ready to come down for this game, and we uh, saw the men's basketball team in practicing, getting ready as uh, winter practice is underway for them. So really exciting stuff here to finally be at that point where we're getting ready for the winter sports season. You've got everybody kind of underway and getting started now with football and, 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 and all the fall sports and whatnot. So really looking forward to getting this thing up and running. Looking forward to getting this game up and running between the Falcons and the Bison here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Falcons in their home blue uniforms with the red pants, the white numbers and the white helmets and the red trim as well. Those look crisp. And I think most importantly for us up here in the press box, you can see the numbers as well. Meanwhile, the MTI Bison counter in the away white uniforms. They've got the periwinkle green, periwinkle blue, that kind of look uh, numbers. Some questions as to what the color actually is. The shiny green helmets out there as they make their way out on the field with their captains. Lackawanna College will do the same. Looks like Delvin Palmer and Dwayne Grantham will be the captains for the Falcons. Grantham had a great game against Army JV. Just in coverage as well, he had a couple plays where you know he has a, kind of that overhang that Coach Reese likes to call him, not necessarily a linebacker, not necessarily a, uh, a safety. And a couple nice passes defended in that matchup. Made some nice tackles as well. And of course, Delvin Palmer had the two long touchdown catches, 78 and 81 yards on the Army JV defense. Really kind of kept the Falcons in the game early against Army JV, didn't let them run away with that. So out at midfield for the coin toss. The officials explaining the rules here of the coin toss. And they'll flip it and we'll see who gets the ball to start things off. If you like one of college, I'm sure for either of these teams you want the ball to start, but we'll see what happens. It looks like MTI has won the toss and deferred. So it will be the Falcons receiving the football to start. Duffin Palmer signaling to the sideline that it's Falcon football. Just deciding which way they want to go with this, and we're almost ready to get things underway. So Barry Brown, who had been a little tender after that Army JV game, looks like he's warming up along with Braden Hawkins as a backup quarterback. So we'll see how much we see of him. And we'll get a look, it looks like, from the Falcons' return game. Always dangerous with Palmer and Cohen Russell. So the Falcons will start with the football. And we're just about ready to get things underway here. Again, the Falcons in the home. Blue uniforms. White numbers, red pants. 
and the white helmets with the Falcon logo on the top of it. As you see it here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. So the Falcons will be receiving and moving left to right as you see it. Palmer and Russell discussing strategy as they make their way. Also out there you got Josh Dodd on the kickoff coverage. Josiah Purdy out there. Dimitri DiPietro, the special teams specialist. So, on to kick. While Paulo Matos, a freshman from Boca Raton, Florida, will be the one kicking right to left as Cohen and Russell stand just inside their own 10 yard line. So Matos has this one lined up at the 35. And he's just about ready for the Bison. And so are the Falcons, the home opener of the 2021 fall season just about ready to get underway as there was one less person than there should have been for MTI. They're running someone on late. Matos looks to his left, looks to his right, approaches the football, puts his right foot to it. It's an end-over-end -end kick that's going to swirl towards the back of the end zone, picked up by Russell just at the goal line. Russell coming out to the right side, has a couple blockers and has a ton of space, now has a convoy in front of him crossing the 35 and steps out of bounds right at the 41, between the 41 and the 42-yard line is where they'll mark him. Man, he was close to breaking that, just couldn't stay on his feet, and that's where the Falcons will take over. Caller returns opening kickoff to the Falcon 42, first down in 10. So they're going to mark this right on the 42, and that's, or no, they're going to push it up to the 45, that's right. So they gave them a couple extra yards there, and that's where the Falcons will take over for their first possession. Lackawanna College averaging around 370 yards per game on offense, a lot of that through the air. Shotgun two by two. Bring him in in motion is Russell. Barry Brown. Handoff running on the right side. A ton of space. Now cutting to the outside. First down into Bison territory and ridden out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Antoine Squire getting started. And that's the Falcons. First down. 16 yards to the 34 yard line. So already a first down for the Falcons and a stoppage here as a flag is thrown. Falcons try to get a snap off quickly, but I think, so they're gonna call a delay of game against the Falcons. The official single delay of game, now hold on. If they signal delay of game, but. All right, so correction. Illegal substitution is the call against MTI. So an illegal substitution is what the officials call, and that will move the Falcons up five yards. First penalty of the game against MTI and Lackawanna College, one play and one penalty at the 29 yard line. So they go two by two. Palmer and Dodd on the near side, bring Palmer in motion, shotgun. Frey and Russell to the top, that quick pass out to Palmer, far side, Frey blocking for him, has a first down, crossing the 20. This one might be coming back though, as Palmer's into the end zone for a touchdown, but a couple flags came out in the area of holding. So Palmer immediately scampers in. 
But the Falcons might have hurt themselves here. Hold on the offense. 10 yard penalty. So, 10 yard penalty will back the Falcons up. This one's going to go all the way back to the 38. So that happened one yard downfield on the play. Still first down. Barry Brown throws it out near side. It's caught by Palmer. Palmer makes one man miss. Got a nice block and trying to get back inside the original line of scrimmage before the penalties down to the 31 yard line. A seven yard pass completion. We'll bring up second and six. Falcons going to be cycling in a lot of backs, a lot of receivers in this contest. Brown, second and six from the 31 of MTI. 13.30 to play, no score. Play action, throws it over the middle. Complete to Purdy, and Purdy's got a first down into the red zone inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line. And that's a Falcons first down. 17-yard pass completion there. And the Falcons try a quick pass again, but the officials blow it dead. And the officials are coming together to make sure they have things correct here. That's the second time that the Falcons have tried a quick snap and the officials have blown it dead. And they're having a discussion right now. So, let's see. False start called against Lackawanna College. The Falcons not helping themselves out. So they move it back to the 19 yard line. Lackawanna College will try to reset. Handoff. This is, no, it's going to be a fake, and uh, Barry Brown's going to throw it to no one in particular. That one going for Purdy. Second down, 15. Second and 15 from the 19 yard line with 12.56 to go in the opening quarter. No score between Lackawanna College and MTI. So Barry Brown with Antoine Squire to his right as Purdy lined up as the tight end to the right side. It's gonna be a handoff to Squire. Squire trying to beat one tackler and he can't get away. Ends up losing a yard on the play. Brought down by Harris. No gain on the play. And that's gonna bring up the first third down of the game. So the Falcons not helping themselves. Palmer and Russell go to the top with Alfonso Foure. Dodd alone to the near side. Brown goes back. Four-man rush. Steps up. Doesn't have a ton to look for. And now we'll have to throw it on the run. Completes it to Foure. And it's a touchdown, touchdown for Lackawanna College. Touchdown, Lackawanna. From the 20-yard line, a 20-yard touchdown pass. To number one, Alfonso Foure for a Falcons touchdown. So a 20-yard touchdown pass. And the Falcons are on the board with 12-14 to go. Camps Cody's kick is up and good. It's seven to nothing. The Falcons are in front over MTI. 
here on the Lackawanna College Falcons YouTube channel. So good looking play there for Lackawanna College. Six plays, 55 yards. For the Falcons on that one. About two minutes and 37 seconds off the clock. On the touchdown drive for Lackawanna College. So now we'll see the offense for the first time for MTI. As Camp Chakoti will kick off from the 35-yard line. 7-0 Lackawanna College on top. So back to receive. Treshawn Washington back to receive. And Sincere Gill. Chakotay looks to his left, looks to his right. Everybody's set and ready to go for the Falcons. Slow trot. Right foot, end over end kick. It's hung up by the wind, picked up by one of the upmen around the 15 yard line, running out to the right side and taken down around the 26 is where MTI will take over. So with 12.09, from their own 25, from the 26-yard line, and that's where the Bison will take over the Lackawanna Falcon defense. 285 yards per game they've given up so far this year. That weirdly they have not been as uh, ball hawking as usual. Just three takeaways in three games. Spread offense here. Three receivers to the near side, one to the top. Out of the shotgun. For Miesman, the quarterback. Back he goes. He's looking near side. Has a player complete inside the 30, and he's knocked down after a pickup of around two. So a two yard pickup. That pass complete to Deion Scott. Makes it second and about eight. Shotgun on the near side, two by two. Handoff running on the right side, and the Falcon defense swallows him up. That was Corey Polk, the ball carrier. Brought down by the Falcons for Sean Lawrence. Polk gets maybe a yard. And it's third down. So the first third down of the game. Coming up here. Shotgun. Back. Looking. Fires. Far side. Oh, that was almost an opportunity. Now flag comes out late, so hold on. Almost a chance for the Falcons to try to pick that one off, but did they get away with something? And I guess in this case, they might not have gotten away with it. We'll see what the officials say. Holding, defensive holding called against Lackawanna College. So that one's going to move the ball for an automatic first down. So MTI has got a first and 10, a fresh set of downs from their own 39-yard line with 10.58 to play here in the first quarter, trailing 7-0. Two by two once again for the Bison. Handoff running on the left side. A little hole opens up for Polk there. He picks up a couple, about four to the 43. MTI working quickly. Two by two once again. Snap, 
Handoff, Polk trying the right side of the line now. May have gotten the edge. He's close to the first down. Ooh, he got tattooed as he crossed the 45. Brought down by the Falcons, Bill Hackett. Billy Hackett on the stop there. A pickup of three to the 47. It's third down. So now the first third down of the game for MTI. Two by two. Shotgun once again. Here's the snap. Handoff. Polk up the middle. Should have the first down. Crossing midfield into Falcon territory. About six yards on the pickup. Or excuse me. Yeah, six yards on the run there. So good looking drive here for the Bison. Under 10 to play here in the first quarter. Trailing 7 0, but into Lackawanna College territory. Handoff running this time on the left side of the line and nowhere to go. Swallowed up on the inside by Meyer Woodard. Gain of two to the 45. Or 46, excuse me. So they're going to give him just one yard. Second down and nine. Three to the top, one to the near side. Out of the shotgun again, and there's a flag thrown in the backfield from the umpire. Delay of game is the call. So a five-yard penalty called against the MTI Bison. Second penalty of the game called against MTI. Three to the top, one on the near side. MTI moving right to left as you see it. Snap, looking, throws it down the middle, and that one's a little high and incomplete for his intended receiver. Roughing the passer called against Lackawanna College. So the Falcons already with their fourth penalty of the game. This one of the 15-yard variety. That's the second first down of the game given up because of penalties by the Falcons. So they're not helping themselves at all early. 8.31 to play. They lead 7-0, but the Bison with a fresh set of downs at the 36-yard line of Lackawanna College. Defense has to wake up a little bit here. Two receivers near side, two to the top, shotgun for MTI, first and 10. Handoff running left side of the line. Good push from the Bison offensive line, but knocked backwards eventually there. Harold O'Neill in on the stop. Now some pushing and shoving. So a pickup. A four on the play. Sincere Gill's first carry of the game. Some pushing and shoving afterwards. Second and six. Two by two again. Shotgun. This is Gill running on the right side of the line. Gets around a few defenders. Has a first down inside the 35 and down around the 32. Brought down by the Falcons, Bill Hackett, 33. Or the 22, excuse me. So they're going to mark that one. About the 22-yard line or so. Nice pickup on the play and a timeout taken by MTI. We'll take one with them. 7-11 to go first quarter, 7-0. Lackawanna College in front on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Oh, come on, you got this. 
I know you can do this. Just believe in yourself the way I believe in you. At the end of the day, everyone just wants a better life. Try making something delicious. Or saving someone's life. Lackawanna College will change the way you think. Change your future. Change your life. This is life changing. This is Lackawanna College. On the restart for Lackawanna College, Gill gets nowhere as the Falcon defense maybe resets a little bit. A loss of three on the play. Back to the 25 yard line. Second and about 13 here as there is a Falcon is a little shaken up. Dwayne Grantham. Two by two, shotgun, snap, back, looking, throws, far side, and pretty good defense there by Akeem Snell. They're step for step with the intended receivers. Meisman can't connect. Brings up the 11th play of the drive here. Third down. 11th play of the drive, but only the second third down. Meisman back, looking, steps up in the pocket, now escapes to the left, is going to have to tuck it and run with it. Can't get away from O'Neal, who makes what ended up being a saving tackle from the first down, a nine-yard pickup for Meisman there. as they're going to mark him at the 16-yard line. And that's it's up up. Four. Four. Down. And now fourth down coming. And MTI going for it. They've had some success running the football here early. Shotgun. Three to the top, one to the near side. Mai's been looking for a quick pass out to the right. Has it in, or is it complete? No, they're going to say it's complete at the 11-yard line, and they pick up another first down. Meisman's pass complete to number 22, Deion Scott. Scott able to pick that one up. Correction, number 25, Brian Jordy Glasser. That's a Bison first down. Brian Jordan Glasker came down with that one. Meisman quick pass out to that side of Jordan Glasker again, who spins. Out of trouble, inside the five. As they get to the four yard line, a pickup of about seven on the play. So the Falcons diced up here early. Still leading seven nothing, but MTI not fooling around. Handoff, running on the right side, a couple Ball yards here. closer to the first down marker from Polk. One yard pickup. Third down. Third down coming here for the Falcons. The defense, can they step up? Need it in a big way. Fakes the handoff, running, and trying to dive for the end zone. Waiting for the signal, he's in. Touchdown, MTI. Meisman on the keeper. Meisman on the keeper We're from Meisman. three yards out, scores. And caps a pretty impressive drive, all things considered. From MTI, six first downs on the drive. 
two conversions on third down, a fourth down conversion as well. A couple penalties help them out. And they get in on the three yard touchdown run. And now one extra point away from tying things up. And they have some trouble with a snap. And the Falcons able to tackle them in the backfield. 7-6 the score. Lackawanna College on top with 4.17 to go. It's the Falcons on top of the Bison here on the Lackawanna Falcons YouTube channel. Oil and gas jobs are back. Are you looking for a life-changing experience? Lackawanna College's School of Petroleum and Natural Gas can put you on a path to a lucrative career in the production and delivery of America's energy in just two years. Choose from two degree programs or two certificate programs with internships that give students real-world and practical experience in the field. Lackawanna College will give you the education you need to build a career in this exciting industry. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Apply today at lackawanna.edu. 15 plays, 74 yards, and a touchdown for MTI. And it's 7-6, Lackawanna College. That was a pretty impressive drive. That went almost eight minutes. Seven minutes, 52 seconds of possession for the Bison. 7-6, they trail, so the defense Really needs to open things up here for Lackawanna College. Meanwhile, the offense, who's been sitting and waiting for their opportunity to get the football, awaits the kick. Bit of a line drive, picked up by Palmer at about the one yard line. Palmer running out to the left side. Now Palmer explodes up the middle. Delvin Palmer might have an opportunity if he can get the angle, able to get across the 50, and then dances the sideline, almost tiptoed it, but is out of bounds. Marked at the 35 yard line of MTI. Brought down at the Bison, 35. First down and 10. So that's where the second drive will start for Lackawanna College. Barry Brown and company come out. They got 35 yards to the end zone. Two to the near side, two to the top. Brown out of the shotgun. Brings a man in motion, it's Purdy. Purdy lines up behind the line. Hand off, Squire. Squire running up the middle, now cuts to the outside, breaks a tackle, Antoine Squire, first down inside the 20, inside the 10, and ridden out of bounds at around the six yard line. Good looking run as he picks up 30 yards. First down and goal, Falcons from the five. Man, and Antoine needs that kind of run. He has had a tough time getting going so far this year. They bring in Overholtz, the tight end, and put him to the left side of the line. He's in there with Purdy as well. Squire in the backfield. So they go double tight to the left side. Brown trying to direct, direct traffic here. And now the official calls for time. Josh Dodd. So they reset the clock, no. So Dodd will step up to the line. A little confusion there, but the Falcons are ready. Pistol look. Squire behind Brown. Foray, the receiver to the top. Double tight to the left side. Hand off. Squire will just take this one up. The middle dives for the end zone, and they're going to mark him down to the one. Squire, the ball carrier. Gain of four. They say he lost his footing. from the one. And we'll go down to the one yard line. Falcons remain double tight on the left side. One receiver to either side. Pistol once again, snap, Brown, handoff, Squire, and this time he can't get through the line as he's swallowed up there. Looked like Jeterius Morris in on the stop amongst the other Bison. So the Falcon offensive line couldn't get the push there. Third and goal from the two.
Brings up third and goal from the two-yard line. Falcons on top, 7-6. 2.26 to go here in the opening quarter. Brown, shotgun, two to the top. Tight to the near side, handoff. This is Squire running on the left side. He's into the end zone, touchdown. Touchdown, Lackawanna. Antoine Squire on the camera. Antoine Squire. And a Falcons touchdown. Gets into the end zone on the three yard scamper. Cam Sakati on the tip of the Barry Brown the hold, John Stretch to snap. At 2 12 here in the first quarter. So four plays, 35 yards. And about 153 off the clock. Scotty's kick is up Scottie's and it's good. Is good. 2-12 to, so to go in the first quarter. The offense hasn't been the issue. 14-6. It's Lackawanna College on top of MTI here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Oil and gas jobs are back. Are you looking for a life-changing experience? Lackawanna College's School of Petroleum and Natural Gas can put you on a path to a lucrative career in the production and delivery of America's energy in just two years. Choose from two degree programs or two certificate programs with internships that give students real-world and practical experience in the field. Lackawanna College will give you the education you need to build a career in this exciting industry. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Apply today at lackawanna.edu. So welcome back. 14 to 6 is the score. It's Lackawanna College in front of MTI here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. I'm Tom Ferguson, Sports Information Director. Thank you for joining us. It's the first touchdown run of the season for Antoine Squire. Gill and Washington set to return. It's Gill and it's Washington back to return for the Bison. Here's the kick, kind of hung up in the air. Will be picked up by Washington around the 16 or 17 yard line. He runs this out to the right side and will get out of bounds around the 30. Washington on return. So with 2.06 to go here on the first, MTI takes over from their own 30. Bison from their own 30. So first and 10 from their own 30, moving right to left after a pretty impressive 15 play, 76 yard drive that took almost eight minutes off the clock. You'd almost expect that from the opponent last week, or you know, on Monday, Army, not necessarily MTI, who spreads it out a lot. Back to throw, Meisman throws over the middle, or on the right side, excuse me, at the numbers is complete. Nine-yard pickup. And uh, there's been a nice connection between Meisman and Jordan Glasker there. Second and one from the 39. Two to the near side, two to the top. Handoff, trying to run up the middle. Polk picks up a first down, crossing the 40 down at the 41-yard line. Already the seventh first down for MTI as they have a first and 10 from the 41 yard line with under 90 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Two by two, Meisman out of the shotgun once again. Falcons showing some pressure on the edge, gonna hand it off, running up the middle, but not finding much space, maybe a yard. Polk on the carry. They're going to give him one. Second down and nine. Makes it second and nine from the 42. Under a minute to go. Two by two again. Polk the ball carrier. Meisman the quarterback. Three down lineman for Lackawanna College. They switch Polk to the right side of Meisman. 
He gets the snap, play action, now looks, throws, near side, tipped up in the air, tipped again, almost an opportunity, and it falls to the turf. The Falcons almost had the interception. Avanti Lockhart and Billy Hackett almost had a chance at that one. And that brings up third down. It's third down. Although that hasn't scared MTI. They're two for three on third downs in this game. With 29.7 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Shotgun again from Iceman. Back he goes. Has some time. Stands. Looks. Fires. Near side. Has it complete. First down into Falcon territory. Got it over the outstretched arms of the Falcons defenders and down to the 41-yard line. 17-yard pickup. First down by some. 17-yard pickup as they connect there, and another first down, and another big third down conversion, no less. Now running on the near side is Gill, who's pulled out of bounds, and the clock runs out on the first quarter. So that's the end of one, it's 14 to six, but look out, the Bison hanging around early with Lackawanna College here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. We never set out to change the world. But at Lackawanna, we see our graduates doing it every day. In healthcare fields like surgical technology, our graduates are making an impact, not only in their own lives, but in the lives of countless patients and their families, changing the world. It's really a simple matter of making life better for others. And there's no better place to start than Lackawanna College. This is life changing. This is Lackawanna College. Visit Lackawanna.edu today. Each one of us has a dream. The challenge in today's world is how to achieve it. Now, more than ever, that's the case. Don't fall behind on your dreams or your college education. You can take your general education classes in English, math, and social science locally at Lackawanna College. Our credits transfer to most colleges so you won't fall behind. Call Lackawanna College today to find out how you can stay home, stay safe, and still pursue your college education. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. So the second quarter about to get started. And it's the MTI Bison hanging around with Lackawanna College here. Pass near side is complete as the second quarter is underway. Nice hit right through there by Keno Holmes. Jordan Glasker though has uh, having himself a game as he picks up another first down. Grabs the seven he needs. First down Bison from the 31. Already the fourth catch of the game for him. That's the ninth first down for the Bison so far in the contest. They trail 14 to six. Here does MTI. Handoff running up the middle and uh, this will be a pickup of about three to the 29 as Gill on the carry once again. Yeah, they've been kind of been death by paper cuts in terms of running the football, but they're getting just enough to put themselves in third and short situations and they're backing themselves in these situations and they're they're kind of just dinking and dunking their way down the field, but MTI is uh, making things work. This is Gill running on the left side and this time the Falcons are there for the stop. Jamon McNeil amongst the Falcons in there. A loss of about a yard it's on the play. Third down. So now, out of the shotgun, what can they do? Back. Weissman looking, throws it, floats it left side, and no one's there. It's incomplete. Someone cut up the field instead of cutting out. Keno Holmes on the coverage. And that will bring up fourth down from a tough spot. Fourth down. And MTI is going to go for it. Fourth and eight from the 30-yard line of the Falcons. They have nine first downs in the game already. 
They go three to the top, one to the near side. Meisman out of the shotgun. He's got a running back to his right. Gets the snap. Back he goes. Looking to his left. Now turns to his right. Has one-on-one -on -one coverage down the near side. Sideline. And it is intercepted. Picked off by the Falcons in the end zone. It is intercepted by the Falcons. Akeem Snell. Akeem Snell able to take that one away in one-on-one -on -one coverage. First down and 10 Falcons from the Bison 20. So Akeem Snell takes it away. And the Falcons take over. The black flag defense finally connects. And the Falcons will get it on their own 20 yard line on offense here after Akeem Snell comes down with the interception and one on one coverage. Just the fourth turnover of the season the Falcons have forced. Barry Brown's got two backs next to him out of the shotgun. Got a receiver to the near side, two to the top. Brown, first and 10 from his own 20 yard line. Puts a man in motion. He's gonna hand off, running up the middle. This is a carry for Xavion Evans. And Evans just powering his way to a first down and more, he won't stop running. Still on his feet and eventually gets out to the 36 yard line. There's a flag on the play, but Evans with a 16 yard carry. Let's check the flag. So let's see what the officials say. Is that a sideline warning? So he signaled what looked like sideline warning, but that's not, even that was kind of like a lazy sideline warning. So the ball gets moved back to the 28. Eight yard pickup there, I guess they'll give Evans. Not sure what happened there, but that makes it second and two. Second down and two thousand. Shotgun again, two to the top, one to the near side. This is a handoff running on the left side, trying to cut up the field and ooh, not really finding much space. Flag comes in late on the carry from DeAndre Scott. It's close to the first down marker, but there is a penalty on the play. Now the officials talking things over after that Scott run, waiting to see what the call is. Personal foul. foul. Well, he signaled one way and then he signaled the other. So who's that on? Called a chop block against Lackawanna College. The official signaled to the defense and then signaled back to Lackawanna College. So another penalty against the Falcons. So that'll back them up. Two to the top, one to the near side. Shotgun. For Barry Brown. Handoff, running on the right side is Xavion Evans, spinning out of trouble, but can't get much further than the line of scrimmage, a one yard pickup. Boy, the Falcons cannot get out of their own way early in this game. Six penalties, called against Lackawanna College. One to the top, three to the near side. Third and nine coming for Lackawanna College. They're two for two on third down so far in the contest. Brown, play action, looking, pumps. Now looking, has two guys running the same route and can't connect as they ran into each other. Brown's pass, pause is complete. Had two guys running the same exact route and Colby Young 
out there running a deep route on the near side sideline alongside Nathaniel Edwards. And they pretty much collided at the football. Fourth and nine, Falcons. So after the offense had looked pretty crisp, took them a couple plays to get there, but they go three and out because of the penalties. And MTI is going to get the ball back, still down just eight. So with 11.40 to go here in the second quarter, Jacody on to kick. Bison showing some pressure, and the officials blow it dead before anything happens. Play clock's at zero. You wonder if maybe it's delay of game. So the official says, yep, delay of game, called against the Falcons. Make that the seventh penalty against Lackawanna College. So the Falcons sleepwalking a little bit here through this game. Jacody is going to be kicking with the wind at his back. So we'll see if he can get a good boot to this. Bison showing some pressure. Gets this one off. Bit of a wobbler. Going to go over the, the uh, receiver's head. And this one's going to bounce all the way back inside the 20. Get away from it if you're MTI and roll all the way to the 10-yard line. So how about that? Chakoti gets this one off all the way to the 10. Nine-yard line, first down and 10, MTI. What should have been Bison football at midfield is instead with 11.24 to go here in the second quarter, their football all the way back at the uh, nine yard line is where they're gonna mark it, wow. We'll have to get uh, how long that kick is gonna be, but I think that's gonna help out Cam's uh, punt average for sure. <laughs> He might have actually kicked that from just outside the end zone. He gets it to roll all the way to the nine. Shotgun, first and ten from the nine. Handoff, Gill running on the left side, is met by the Falcons and is thrown backwards for a loss. Back to the six. A loss of three on the play. Loss of three, second and 13. So Lockhart in on the stop, and maybe the defense is going to wake up a little bit here for Lackawanna College. They've struggled, labored in this game against an MTI offense that has moved the ball pretty methodically. Two by two. Shotgun again for the Bison. 10.43 to go second quarter. They trail 14-6. to six. Three... Man rush from the Falcons. High pass over the middle. Had his intended receiver open, but it's off his fingertips incomplete too high. Almost intercepted as well. Never want to miss high over the middle. Maybe a chance for the Falcons here on defense to force a quick three and out. Ball on the six yard line, left to right MTI in possession. 10.37 to go here in the first half. Here's the snap. Back. Three-man rush. Meisman looking to get rid of it. Throws it over the middle. It's high, and it is incomplete for his intended receiver. Billy Hackett had the coverage behind. There was good coverage in front as well. Really would have had to try to fit that into a tight window to have any shot at that. And punt team is on for MTI. So a big win for the Falcon offense, or the Falcon defense. And an opportunity now for Palmer and Russell to show their skills. Matos back to kick. Standing with a shadow of his own goalpost just behind him. Jopalo Matos. Pretty much right on the line, and a delay of game is called against MTI. That's the third or fourth delay of game that's been called in, in this one so far. So I don't know if either if both teams aren't paying attention to the clock, they can't see it, what the deal is. 
Third penalty against the Bison. That's not going to hurt them that much. Backs them up to the three as opposed to the six. Matos really doesn't have to move too much. He awaits the snap. A little bit low, gets it, kicks it. High, end over end that hits a wall of wind and bounces at the 26 yard line and that's where the Bisons will pick it up between the 26 and the 27. As a helmet came free. First down and 10 Falcons. From two separate Falcons on that. So Lagawana College will take over with 10.23 to go in plus territory for the second time today at the 27 yard line this time. After a punt hit a wall of wind. Barry Brown is three for five. Got 44 yards and a touchdown pass. He's got two receivers to the near side and a receiver to the top. Josiah Purdy, the tight end, to the left side of the line. Play action, Brown trying to escape, under duress, throws this on his back foot, just floats it up high, it's tipped up and it's incomplete. That's a dangerous throw, and the Falcons are lucky that that thing was incomplete. Looked like Dodd might have been the only receiver really in the vicinity. There were five or six Bison that were just waiting for that one to come down, and the Falcons, and the Falcons are lucky to come away with that one and live to fight another down. Second and 10 now from the 27 yard line. Two to the near side, one to the top. Brown out of the shotgun. Snap, handoff, up the middle. Xavion Evans inside the 25, now cuts back to the outside, goes backwards, gets across the 20, dives forward, looks like he should have a first down at the 17 yard line. Gain of 11, and that's a Falcons first down. He should have it, right? The officials haven't officially signaled that yet, but that should be that should be a 10-yard pickup and a first down where they have that ball marked. The officials have been, let's say, methodical. And they officially call it a first down on the 10-yard pickup. So, so Evans with 18 yards rushing Falcons into the red zone. Ball on the 17-yard line. Barry Brown looks to the near side for the signal from Coach Bear. Two to the top, one to the near side. Evans to his left. Brown out of the shotgun, handoff to Evans, running up the middle. Evans, nice space, gets inside the 10, close to the first down marker again. Depends on where they spot him. That might be another 10 yard pickup and another first down. First down. So back-to-back 10-yard -back runs for Xavier Evans. And now it's first and goal from the seven-yard line. 9.15 to go. Here in the first half, it's 14 to six, Lackawanna College on top. Brown, handoff, almost ran into Evans, actually got tripped up for a second there, but Xavier Evans bangs his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Lackawanna College. Lackawanna. Xavion Evans on the carry for seven yards and a Falcons touchdown. So Xavion Evans from seven yards out and Lagawana stretches the lead. Now we take the PAT, Camp Chicago, set the hole, Barry Brown. John stretched the snap. So the Falcons, after what looked like a slow start for them on offense on that drive, were able to figure it out, go four plays and punch it in in 27 yards. The short field obviously helps. Chikati's kick is up, and it's good. Chikati's kick. 21-6, Falcons good. on top. 9.02 to play here in the opening quarter. It's Lackawanna College football on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Each one of us has a dream. The challenge in today's world is how to achieve it. Now, more than ever, that's the case. Don't fall behind on your dreams or your college education. You can take your general education classes in English, math, and social science locally at Lackawanna College. Our credits transfer to most colleges so you won't fall behind. Call Lackawanna College today to find out how you can stay home, stay safe, and still pursue your college education. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. 
So a touchdown run for Xavion Evans, second touchdown run of the game for Lackawanna College. And they lead 21 to six here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. I'm Tom Ferguson, Sports Information Director for Lackawanna College. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a beautiful sun-soaked afternoon here from Scranton, Pennsylvania. A balmy 70-some degrees outside. Depends on who you ask or what app you're looking at to see exactly what it is. A wind moving right to left as we see it here at Scranton's Memorial Stadium. Chakotay on to kick. Player runs on late here for MTI. Coach Norm Richards, obviously the first season in junior college football. He's coached a couple seasons at MTI. Was there for the inaugural season for them a couple years ago as a prep school and of course won the prep school championship in 2019. This one picked up by Sincere Gill running out to the left side is hit around his 12 yard line. Good coverage by the Falcons. And that's where the Bison will take over. So they got them at the 13. Rodriguez on the stop for Lackawanna College. So they go two receivers near side. They go two to the top. It's a shotgun. 8.56 to play here in the first half. Nazir Dean. Out there on the field, he looks like he's in coverage in the slot on the near side for Lackawanna College. Weissman brings a man in motion, will hand it off to the back though instead and really nowhere to go for Polk. Good pressure coming there from Harold O'Neill. I'm gonna say no gain right at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 from their 13 yard line. Shotgun again. Mike's been trying to draw someone off. Now he goes back, looking, under pressure, taken down inside the five, down near the two yard line. The Falcons get him for the first time. Brought down. Looked like Brian Dallas on the stop, the sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Brian Dallas. Loss of 11 on the play. Third down. And 21. So danger here for MTI. Third and forever. Meisman goes back in the shadow of his own goal post. He's hitting the backfield. Ball comes free. Falcons jump on top of it. They're going to say it's a safety. They're going to say he was hitting the backfield. And it's a safety. Meisman lost it on his way down. Is down. Avanti Lockhart on the stop and a safety for the Falcons. So two straight sacks for the Falcons ends in points and it's 23 to 6. So the Falcon defense suddenly wakes up. And Lackawanna College now 23 to 6, 7.39 to go here in the first half. So the kick coming from MTI left to right. You got to love the pressure. The Falcons, you know, early in the game, it looked like they were only rushing three, maybe four on that drive, especially backed up at the 13 yard line. They brought pressure on every possession. And they end up with a sack and a safety. A pair of sacks and a safety. So now, back to kick. Will be Santos with the ball, or Matos with the ball on the 20. Yeah, Juan Paulo Matos. Matos. Has the ball on the 20 yard line, kicking left to right as we see it. Palmer and Russell back there, so is Isaiah Edwards. 
Josh Dodd out there on the hands team. Matos approaches. Right foot through. End over end kick going to get hung up at the 31 yard line. Picked up by Cohen Russell. Russell cuts to the left. Now cuts back up the middle. Russell trying to get to the outside. Cohen trying to break a tackle. Taken down to the 41. There's a flag on the play. Multiple flags. Multiple lines of laundry being done. And it looks like they're signaling for a hold here. So Lackawanna College going to get called. A holding call on Lackawanna College was a signal from the official. So let's see what he has to say. A holding on Lackawanna College. So that's going to back them up. They're going to say it occurred at the Lackawanna College 45. So that's going to back them up to their own 35-yard line. After the penalty, it'll be first down in 10. So Lackawanna College starts their fourth possession from their own 35, moving right to left as we see it, leading 23-6 to six with 7.30 to go here in the second quarter. Brown and Scott in the backfield next to him. Two receivers to the near side, one to the top. Looks like you got Colby Young, the receiver, deep to the near side. Hand off Scott. DeAndre Scott trying to get to the outside. Makes one man miss across the 40 and scampers out of bounds around the 45-yard line. He is close to the first down marker. I think they're going to give it to him on a 10-yard run. Yep. 10 yards and a first down. Falcons first. Down. Eighth first down of the game. First and 10 from the 45 as DeAndre Scott in his first carry. Picks that one up for 10 yards. Moving right to left, overholds the, or the uh, tight end to the left side of the line. Here is the run again. This is Scott. DeAndre Scott just making people miss. Backs his way up across midfield into Bison territory and down to the 41 yard line. A 14 yard pickup there. 14, and that's another Falcons first down. So suddenly the run game starting to find some openings here. Back-to-back uh, -back first down runs for DeAndre Scott. Now it's first and 10 from the 41-yard line of MTI. Two to the top, one receiver near side. Run it with Scott one more time, trying to get out to the left side. Now just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. A flag comes out late, and Scott is taken down in the backfield. That's good pursuit and good defense from the Bison. We'll check the flag. Deterius Morris on the stop. This one's going to go against Lackawanna College. It was thrown in the area of where you would think it would be. Yep, holding called against Lackawanna College. Nine penalties against the Falcons. And this one happened. They're going to mark the ball back as Lackawanna College was on the 41. So they're going to mark this back at their own 49. So it happened at the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from their, or first and 20, excuse me, from their own 49 yard line. Shotgun for Barry Brown. Handoff running on the left side. This time is Isaiah Edwards getting his first carry of the game. Isaiah Edwards, the ball carrier. Edwards picks up about six to the 45. So penalties have hurt the Falcons. Defense starting slow. Offense was consistent early, but has been a little inconsistent since. It seems like the Falcons are trying a couple different things, too, and that might be part of the issue. Two to the top, one to the near side. Probably going to see a lot of different Falcons out there today. Mixing things up against MTI. Handoff running on the left side. This is Edwards once again. Isaiah Edwards has a first down or is close to it. Dragged out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Good looking run from him. About 15 yards on the pickup to the 30. And that's a Falcon first down. Down. 
Four straight runs for Lackawanna College. Their 10th first down of the game. First and 10 from the 30. 23-6 they lead. 5-13 to go. Here in the first half. Fake the handoff. Pass over the middle to Purdy. Purdy's got a first down inside the 20. Josiah down inside the 15. And should be down around the 14-yard line now. Some pushing and shoving in the backfield. By one of the uh, linemen from Lackawanna College. Mixing it up, so hold on. Got mixed up with Ben, ben Eisenhower and uh, one of the players from MTI, Harris, were pushing and shoving way behind the line. Not sure what happened there. So let's see here. JB Nelson was listening in on that conversation, says it's going against MTI. Personal foul called against the Bison. So they're going to add that after the play, I believe. So that was a 16-yard pass play. Falcons 16-yard pass completion to Purdy. Plus the penalty that moves the ball from where it was at the 14 down to the 7. Fourth penalty of the game against MTI. And now Lackawanna College is a first and goal from the seven yard line. First and goal from the seven. Under five minutes to play here in the second quarter. Barry Brown looking, quick pass, near side, looking for Colby Young who comes down with it. Did he hang on to the official? Say it, did he did. Touchdown. Touchdown, Lackawanna. Brown's pass complete to Colby Young for seven yards, then a Falcons touchdown. A seven yard touchdown pass, Brown to Young for the third time this year. But hold on, there's a penalty flag on the play, so hold on. There's a flag in the backfield and the officials are discussing. So let's see what the call is. Touchdown is good. After the play, personal foul on MTI. I believe that will be enforced on the kickoff. So, touchdown stands. Everything's good for Lackawanna College. Brown to Young. Third time this season, third time this week, counting the Army game earlier. Chakotay on to kick, and now the officials want to talk again. 4.44 to play. So Chakotay on to kick the extra point. Here's the snap. Hold down. Kick on the way. Up and good. Zakati's kick is... 30 to six is the score. 4.44 to go here in the first half. It's Lackawanna College Football on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Oil and gas jobs are back. Are you looking for a life-changing experience? Lackawanna College's School of Petroleum and Natural Gas can put you on a path to a lucrative career in the production and delivery of America's energy in just two years. Choose from two degree programs or two certificate programs with internships that give students real-world and practical experience in the field. Lackawanna College will give you the education you need to build a career in this exciting industry. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Apply today at Lackawanna.edu. You. So the Falcons go in 65 yards on six plays, three minutes and 46 seconds. A couple penalties helped them out on that drive, and a couple penalties almost derailed them as well. But Lackawanna College now will kick from the 50 yard line. So the ball's at midfield after the personal foul penalty. Back to MTI up. So let's see what Lackawanna wants to do here. They lead 30 to six. There's 4:44 to go. Do they maybe try to uh, an onside? Do they maybe try to pooch it a little bit here, or do they just bomb it into the end zone? Chakoti has this ball on the near side hash at the 50. Approaches, puts his boot to it, end over end kick. 
Might have put that through the uh, uprights as it goes into the back of the end zone. So from the 20 yard line, or the 25 is where MTI will start. MTI trailing 30 to six. This will be the fifth possession. They had a ton of success on the first two possessions at a 15 play touchdown drive on their opening one. Had a pretty long drive as well in their next one before throwing an interception to end it. The last two drives though have ended in punts and safeties. Or a punt and a safety, I should say. Play action. Look over the middle. Throw complete, and it's a good-looking run, and they're going to pick up a first down and more. Get into the outside. Jordan Miles on the run into Falcon territory. Makes a man miss on the sideline. Is knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Miles. 43 yards on the pickup. So 43 yard pass play. Maybe reminding Lackawanna College a little bit that MTI was moving the ball. First and 10 from the Lackawanna College 32 yard line. 4.15 to go as they're trying to ask for the play clock to be reset. Shotgun. Play action, handoff. Tyrese Mills able to get into the backfield and nowhere to go there. Maybe a pickup of a yard on the run. I believe that was Polk. Net first by the Falcons, Tyrese Mills. Mills almost lost his footing as he came to grab him. I think O'Neill was on the stop as well. So one yard pickup to the 31 yard line. 3.37 to play here in the first half. Two by two again. Meisman out of the shotgun. Back. Looks, looks, looking to the left. He's hitting the backfield and thrown down by Brian Dallas at the 40. A nine yard loss on the play. And it's third down. Another sack, the third of the game, and it's third down coming up for the Bison. Third and 18 from the 40. Three of seven on third down so far. Back, Meisman looking, pressure comes right up the middle, has it to his receiver, oh that was dangerous. Coming to, up to make the play, a nice catch I believe with Sincere Gill. He gets to the 28 yard line and alignment is down. For MTI, the training staff runs out to check on him. So he'll get looked at as the clock is reset. So that's a 12 yard pickup on the play. So they found Miles on the catch there. Excuse me, it was uh, it was Gill on the catch for 12 yards, but that brings up fourth down. Fourth and about six, so it's manageable for MTI if they want to do something with it here, but right now the uh, attention turns to the injured offensive lineman who's up. The training staff got a good look at him. And a round of applause from the fans here at Scranton's Memorial Stadium. Don't forget, next week, Lackawanna College home again, taking on the nationally ranked Monroe College in what's going to be a massive game between those two teams. Fourth and six coming. MTI is one for two today. Out of the shotgun. Polk to his right. Two by two again. 
Handoff, it's Polk running up the middle. He's close, it depends on the spot. He's driven backwards eventually. Now they're gonna blow it dead. He might be a yard shy. Depends on where they mark him. O'Neal on the stop. Yep, they're gonna say he got five instead of six. First down, Falcon. So turnover on downs with two minutes to play. Gives Lackawanna College the football from their 23. And all three timeouts remaining for the Falcons. Remember, they got the ball to start the first half, so it will be MTI football starting the second. Three to the near side, one to the top. Barry Brown out of the shotgun. Back he goes, looking downfield, throws a home run ball, looking for Delvin Palmer, got him in stride, Palmer catches, he's gonna run away, Palmer escapes to the end zone, touchdown, but, but, there's a flag, there's a flag in the backfield, or in, on the field, so let's see what they say. Palmer got away for the score, but what's the flag? 77 yards to the house. Touchdown is good. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct against Lackawanna College. So a 77 yard pass completion to Delvin Palmer. So one play, 77 yards. 10 seconds on that drive. It can happen just like that. But the Falcons called for their 10th penalty of the half. We'll back them up on the kickoff here. Cody on to kick, puts that one through. Kick is good. No issues there, 37-6 the score, 150 to play. Here in the second quarter, it's Lackawanna College on top of MTI on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. We never set out to change the world, but at Lackawanna, we see our graduates doing it every day. In healthcare fields like surgical technology, our graduates are making an impact not only in their own lives, but in the lives of countless patients and their families. Changing the world. It's really a simple matter of making life better for others. And there's no better place to start than Lackawanna College. This is life changing. This is Lackawanna College. Visit Lackawanna.edu today. So it's Lackawanna College on top of the MTI Bison here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Try to see if we can get you updates All right, they're putting the ball on the 50-yard line, so maybe he pointed, when he signaled it, he signaled it against Lackawanna College, but maybe he meant, maybe the official meant that it was on MTI. Yeah, so that penalty was not against Lackawanna College, that was against the Bison. Second straight personal foul penalty. Washington and Gill back to receive. Cody on to kick. Put the last one through the uprights. Boots this one off to the left and way out of the back of the end zone with the win. So from their own 25 yard line is where MTI will take over. So first and 10 from their 25. Snap, 
Handoff running on the left side is Polk, and he's taken down to the backfield. Jamon McNeil. In on the stop. The freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey. No gain. No gain, second. Clock moving, 124 to go here in the first half. Shotgun again, three to the near side, one to the top. Back looking, steps up in the pocket. Now Meisman running out of time, going to have to throw it down the sideline. Dangerous pass, and it is caught, but are they going to say it was caught in bounds? It's picked off by the Falcons, but I think they might say he didn't come down with it in bounds. Let's see. Oh, yep, they're going to say he didn't catch it in bounds. That was going to be a heck of a play by Jeremiah Jackson. But instead, it's just a breakup and an incomplete pass. So a good looking play there. Brings up third down and an incomplete pass. Jordan Glasker couldn't come down with that one. And a quick three and out with 1.02 to go and all three timeouts remaining is gonna bring the Falcon offense back out on the field. Russell and Palmer Deadly combination will make their way out. So that was TJ Mountain. I guess he and Jeremiah Jackson had switched numbers, but Mountain was the one who almost came down with that one. So the Falcon defense, after a slow start, has started to pick things up. For Lackawanna College, this one going to bounce in front of Cohen Russell, and he's going to think better of it. And, oh, that was close. Now, a Falcon might have been bumped back into it, but the, let's see what the officials say. Yeah, now the officials, rightly so, say you can't pick it up and run with it, but are they going to give it to Lackawanna College, or are they going to say Lackawanna College was blocked into it? This could be big here with 49.7 seconds to go. The officials having a discussion. They're going to say Lackawanna College football. And MTI is certainly not going to be happy with that call. First down and 10, Falcons. So with 49.7 seconds left. Lagoana College from their own 46 yard line will take over. <coughs> Barry Brown, receiver to the near side, two to the top. Actually two by two, in tight on the near side and Brown out of the shotgun. Makes the handoff and the officials blow it dead. Timeout taken by the Bison. They want to talk things over. We'll take a break with them. 37-6, 48 seconds to play here in the second quarter on the Lackawanna Falcons YouTube channel. Imagine the innovator you could be tomorrow with an innovative education today from Lackawanna College. Our Level Up program puts high school students on an early college pathway for an easier college transition and faster degree attainment at a dramatically lower cost. That's why Fast Company named us one of the world's most innovative companies. With an education from Lackawanna College, imagine where you'll be tomorrow. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. So welcome back on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. I'm Tom Ferguson, Sports Information Director, first and 10 from the 46 yard line with 49 seconds to play. 49.7 to be exact. Lagawana College has a 37 to six lead and they've got the ball on their own 46 yard line with 
Three timeouts remaining. And MTI kind of just helped them out a little bit, calling a timeout there. Three to the top, one to the near side. Back goes Barry Brown out of the shotgun. Steps up, has time. Now loads this one up, throws it down the field. Has one on one. Oh, just couldn't get it to his man, Josh Dodd. Just let him a little bit. Brown was hit as he let that one go. He seems to be okay, though. So with 42 seconds to go is where the clock stops. Dodd has to hustle back. As does Del Delvin Palmer. Palmer and Foray the near side. It's Dodd and Cohen Russell on the far side. Antoine Squire is the back to the left of Barry Brown. Alfonso Foray has a touchdown catch. Delvin Palmer has a touchdown catch. Back goes Brown, looking down the near side. Now throws it, has it complete. This is Cohen Russell, who ran the intermediate route over the middle. Has it caught into Buffalo, or into Bison territory, down to the 31-yard line. About 23 yards on the pickup, and a timeout is taken by Lackawanna College. Believe it or not, that's Russell's first catch. He came in as tied for the team lead in receptions. Had 15 catches already this season, but make it 16 after that. Actually had the team lead, excuse me, in, in terms of catches. So the first timeout taken by Lackawanna College. They now have a first and 10 with 32.6 seconds on the clock from the 31 yard line. Foray and Palmer are the receivers to the near side. Russell and Dodd are the receivers to the top. Squire to the left of Barry Brown. Out of the shotgun once again. Snap. Little high, Brown brings it down, throws it short, complete to Antoine Squire inside the 30, makes one man miss, and is taken down around the 25-yard line, a six-yard pickup. And the Falcons have to burn another timeout. So six-yard pass completion there. Second and four coming from the 25. 23.7 seconds to go. Falcons would love to get one more in the end zone here before the end of the half. Squire going to go back out there with Brown. Palmer and Foray will again be the near side. Russell and Dodd to the far side. Right to left, Falcons in possession, leading 37 to six, trying to get another touchdown on the board. Now they're gonna line up Palmer directly behind Foray, stacked on top of each other. Now they kind of move a little bit, but they're, they're in tight to the near side on the left side of the line. Russell in the slot to the top. Brown goes back, he's looking, looking for the fade to Foray, and it's off his fingertips. It might have been tipped by the defender, and it's incomplete in the corner. Third down. third down coming for the Falcons. They're two for three on third down today. Jeterius Morris, a freshman from Ashburn, Georgia, on the stop. Was previously at Hutchinson Community College before coming home, a little closer to home anyway. Josiah Purdy will check in. Cohen Russell will check out. 18 seconds to play. They gotta hurry up though. They got five seconds. Play clock winding down. They just get the playoff. Handoff running up the left side of the line is Antoine Squire is gonna fight for the first down to the 15 yard line. Falcons quickly get up. Clock stops at 12 and a half seconds. So Squire gets to the 15 and the Falcons get set. And instead they take a timeout with nine and a half seconds to play. So Squire with a good looking run. Mm -hmm. 
gets 10 yards on the play. Yeah, on to attempt, to attempt the field goal. Buried the hole. John stretches the snap. Chicote will kick the 32-yard field goal. Ball, ball Has a good win behind him. Ball a little to the left. Chicote puts this one up. And through from 32 yards. Kick from 32 yards is good. So Cam, who was one for three seconds remaining in the first half. Two on the season. 40, MTI, Bison, six. Puts that one through from 32 yards out with 5.3 seconds to play. So the Falcons get to the 15. The six plays 39 yards on the field goal drive there. And with 5.3 seconds to play, Chikadi will come on and kick from his own 35 yard line. Looks to his left, then to his right. He's gonna approach the football here. Spikes this one off the ground. It's gonna be picked up by one of the Bison up men around his own 16 yard line. Dances out of bounds at the 24 with 2.4 seconds left. So we're gonna get one play here. Derek Harris. Petro on the stop. for the Falcons as they're going to mark this at the 30. First and 10, MTI from the 30. And now they move it back to the 25. So they're going to go They have too many players on the field. So someone's got to go off. Yep, there's the flag. Illegal substitution. Yeah, MTI had 12 players on the field. Someone ran off, so they'll lose yardage back to the 20 now. Now they've got the right number of players. First and 15 from their own 20, trailing 40 to six. Back, nice one over the middle, and that is knocked down incomplete. Broken up by the Falcons, Nasir Dean. So Nasir Dean says, no thank you, and that's the end of the first half. The Falcons lead 40 to six at the break. We'll take a break, we'll be back with more. It's halftime, Lackawanna College on top. It's Lackawanna College football on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Each one of us has a dream. The challenge in today's world is how to achieve it. Now, more than ever, that's the case. Don't fall behind on your dreams or your college education. You can take your general education classes in English, math, and social science locally at Lackawanna College. Our credits transfer to most colleges so you won't fall behind. Call Lackawanna College today to find out how you can stay home, stay safe, and still pursue your college education. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Are you an entrepreneur or someone with a great idea for a new product or service? If so, the Venture Lab at Lackawanna College is for you. The Venture Lab helps entrepreneurs in the early stages of launching their microenterprise. But what's that? A microenterprise is a business that operates on a smaller scale. The Lab focuses on helping these types of businesses through consultation and networking with experts and peers. The Venture Lab operates from the second floor boardroom of Angeli Hall as we continue to develop our own space at our Scranton campus. 
Lab hours may change between the fall and spring semester, so please email us ahead of time to make the most of your visit to the Venture Lab or to schedule an appointment. To stay in constant contact and help you launch your microenterprise, the Venture Lab utilizes the Microsoft Teams platform. Teams is a great way for our experts and partners to stay up to date with you and your business, no matter where you are. Need to get in touch with us? Email the Venture Lab at venturelab at lackawanna.edu. The Venture Lab helps students apply the lessons they've learned in the classroom and gain hands-on experiences in the lab to prepare to launch their microenterprise. Our unique co-working space lets entrepreneurs work with faculty members and our other aspiring business developers. Who knows? One of your peers might have a great suggestion that really lets your idea take off. We will continue to follow college policies and proper social distancing guidelines. We are also proud to introduce our new fabrication center. The fabrication center will allow entrepreneurs to design and make 3D prints of their product ideas. Our services allow students to work on their microenterprise while forming business plans and networking with industry contacts. The Venture Lab is also dedicated to helping new businesses find funding for their dreams. Be sure to ask about our micro loan program right away. There are already several types of businesses using the Venture Lab to build their future success, including a self-help organization, a health and beauty product manufacturer, and a computer design and repair group. If you are ready to see your business ideas come to life, reach out to the Venture Lab team and schedule a consultation. We can't wait to hear from you. Imagine the innovator you could be tomorrow with an innovative education today from Lackawanna College. Our Level Up program puts high school students on an early college pathway for an easier college transition and faster degree attainment at a dramatically lower cost. That's why Fast Company named us one of the world's most innovative companies. With an education from Lackawanna College, imagine where you'll be tomorrow. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Halftime here from Scranton's Memorial Stadium. It's Lackawanna College on top of the MTI Bison, 40 to 6, the first time these two teams are meeting. I'm Tom Ferguson. Thanks for joining us on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Appreciate having you guys along for the ride, watching the Falcons who well, they struggled a little bit in that first quarter. A lot of credit goes to MTI. You know, they're facing a very tough schedule. It's very, very hard to go from even from the prep school ranks all the way to junior college. And then you think about some of the teams they've faced already so far this year in Snow College, obviously taking on Lackawanna here, facing Independence. They've got Iowa Western later on this year as well. Uh, they've got some pretty big, heavy hitters on their schedule. So they're going to take their licks in a lot of these games, but uh, maybe they'll learn a lot and certainly improve quickly. I'm sure that's what Coach Richards is telling himself and telling his players about the schedule they're taking. They're going to take some beatings early with the hopes that in a couple years, They'll have a program that's built to compete and built to get players to that next level. Lackawanna College doing a pretty good job out there after that slow start. The uh, offense was able to click into gear and then suddenly the defense started to click after they had struggled early, had given up a 15-play touchdown drive and then... 8, 9, 10, 11 play drive that ended in an interception, but that was really the turning point for the defense for Lackawanna College. They forced a three and out on the next drive. They forced what could be a three and out, if you will, because the third play ended in a safety. Uh, they had back-to-back -back sacks on one drive as well, and after giving up a 43-yard pass play, they're able to spring back in, get a turnover on downs, and then get a three and out just before the end of the half to get the ball back, get into position to kick a field goal, and then the end of the half took it from there on the last possession for the Bison. So the defense really starting to step it up, certainly for Lackawanna College. The offense seems like it's fits and starts. They had a good start to this game. We're running the ball pretty much anytime they wanted. We're throwing the ball where they needed it to on their first two touchdown drives. Pretty simple there. Then they kind of hurt themselves with penalties. That's been a big issue for Lackawanna College. Nine penalties so far in this contest for them, but uh, they were, seemed to find things eventually on offense. The Barry Brown to Devin Paul 
Palmer or Delvin Palmer connection connected once again. 77 yard touchdown pass as well. That's one of three touchdown passes for Barry Brown so far in this contest. Had one to Colby Young as well. Alfonso Ferre had one for 20 yards out. Antoine Squire with a touchdown run. Xavier Evans had a touchdown run as well. And then Camp Chicote with a 32 yard field goal. Up and good. The difference right now. 40-6, to six, Lackawanna College on top of the MTI Bison. Let's take a listen to the voice of the Falcons, Mike Rickard, talking with Donovan Reiser, uh, one of the offensive line stalwarts, if you will, for this Falcon offense from Media Day earlier this year. We are at Falcon Football Media Day 2021. Joining us, the big guy, offensive lineman, Donovan Riser. Donovan, welcome to Media Day. How excited did you get the season started? I'm so excited. You have no idea. I can't wait to get on the field with the guys. Now, you, you were with us last year, but abbreviated season. Just you know, two games. Practice wasn't the same. It was cold during mm -hmm. practice time. How different is it this year compared to, to last year? The energy last this winter? year has been it's so much different. I mean, like, the guys are, everyone's excited to be out there. You know, everyone's banging around. It's been nice to be on the field. It has nice weather, you know, not dealing with all the elements, obviously. Yeah, yes. I'm sweating a little bit, though. So it could have a been a couple bit, degrees yeah. cooler today, but that, but that's all right. Um, you had a decision to make this year, right? So in the offseason, so you had a lot of Division One offers, and you were really, you know, looking to see what's going to be the right place. But I think luckily for, you know, Lackawanna College, Coach Bardini, and the entire, you know, Falcon football family, you know, you decided, I'm going to let it roll one more year, you know, at Lackawanna and, uh, and see what happens. So yeah. what are you looking forward to this season? I'm looking forward to getting the field with my guys again. You know, play a full season with them. You know, I, I bet on myself, bet on my coach, bet on my team. I really trust everyone here to get me the right spot. Right. You know? And if anyone's watching, you know, Donovan is a, a killer guy in the weight room, you know, works his butt off, works his butt off his field. He's never hurt, you know, just oh, yeah. grinding, you know, you know, doing your thing. So, yeah. you know, we are all excited, you know, to see it back on the field. So let's just dig in and ask you some quick little personal questions. Mm -hmm. We'll worry about that football stuff later when sure. you're dominating on the yeah. field. So just where are you from? What's your hometown? Mattawan, New Jersey. And then where's that? Uh, it's Monmouth County. All right. So right so, on the shore. <laughs> so right on the shore. Yeah. How... The shore and Scranton, right? I mean, Scranton is great and all. Like, look, we're here at Scranton Memorial Stadium, but you know, do you miss being able to just walk to the beach or take a little jaunt to the beach? I spend most of my free time with my friends fishing, okay. being by the water on the boat, something like that. So, being landlocked like this and not being by the shore has been—it's been rough, you know. But it's—I've been I found some lakes and rivers to go by. You know, so, is that something you like to do in your off time? Is you know, go yeah, out, I have, go I have two fishing, fishing rods back in my room. It's, it's what I go do when I have free time. What are your? Have you gone fishing here? And yeah. like, where where are your spots around here? So, I went down about 20 minutes uh, west, Blackwater River. Okay. I found a spot right. Like a path in the woods at a park, and it's like you can fish there and everything. I found I found some trout and stuff, so that was pretty cool. All right, nice. Yeah, I good. used to fish, but I didn't like taking the fish off the hook. Yeah. I was afraid to touch them, so yeah. my fishing days are gone. Um, any other unique talents that you have besides fishing? Like you know, something I was like, all right, we never knew this about with Donovan, or is it just the fishing? Uh, just the fishing. I'm big into fishing. Yeah, I spend a lot of my free time doing. That. When you catch the fish, do you cook it, clean it up, cook it yourself? I, do you unless that? so, fresh water I don't keep, but salt water when home, okay. I keep everything. All right, good. Now do you have like a big boat or something? You go out my grandfather does. All right. yeah. Well, you were living a highlight. It's nice. There, yeah. You know? Really so nice. I'm not going to feel bad for you sleeping in McKinney no, you know, so yeah, much because yeah. you know the other you know four or five months of the year you're doing you're doing get a pretty good right. setup back yep. home. What are some things you like to do around campus besides fish, like you know at the calf, anything like that? You we know, go to the student union and play pool a lot. Actually, we've been doing that this semester more because now with COVID being a little bit less uh, right. less crazy right now, we can actually go up there, play pool, hang out, watch a movie or something like that. All right, good. Now you're like a basketball guy and stuff too. You're going to be doing some intramural stuff. Yeah, with we're us? definitely going to go play some basketball. All right, soon. so you know we wait, we let your football guys finish football season exactly. before we allow you guys. Yeah. to get into basketball intramurals. Yeah, can't. But can't um, as long anything. as you can see out, you know, out on the out on the floor mm -hmm. running around and stuff too. Yeah, you'll see. What's the favorite thing you like to eat here at the calf? Um, my favorite thing to make here is the ribs. Mike makes some great ribs. Like once a month, he'll get them, and they're just they're killer. All right. Yeah, and then now you're cruising down the highway. What, what kind of tune do you listen to? I listen to country usually when it's nice out. And when it's really nice out, it's country or rock. And then when you know sometimes we're getting ready for games, some rap, of course, you know. All right. Well, yeah, stuff. you probably can't get away from the rap. Right? Not too you much. Know, so yeah, I know it's much. you know. So I'm, I'm pretty diverse when it comes to music. I am a little bit too, and I you know the rap stuff is starting to you know. Mm -hmm wear on me a little bit too. Yeah. So I don't mind it as much. It doesn't hurt my head. No, you know, lifting no, I, I can't. The metal, I gotta have like rock on for rock lifting and the, the rap kind of kills me. Yeah. I'm yeah, not gonna lie. So just before we, before we leave you go, what's a success for you this season? Winning a national championship. Yeah. That's it. I think that's everyone's yeah, that's ultimate goal. Yeah, that's that's yeah. yeah. Alright. Yeah. The big fella, number yes, 58, Donovan Riser, joining us on Falcon Football Media Day. Best of luck. Thank Push you. people around this year, you know will you? I will. Pant. You know I will. Yep. Make sure to catch Donovan here at Scram Memorial Stadium, all our Falcon home games, and on the LC Fan Network. Take flight. 
At Lackawanna College, we never said we could change the world, but we believe our graduates can. That's why we offer programs in healthcare fields like ultrasound technology. Our graduates play a vital role in modern healthcare, using diagnostic technology to help improve the lives of their patients, making a difference in people's lives. That's what changing the world is all about. And it all starts at Lackawanna College. Visit Lackawanna.edu today. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. So welcome back to Scranton's Memorial Stadium, where the score is 40 to 6, 850. Still remaining here at halftime. I'm Tom Ferguson, the sports information director for Lackawanna College. Thanks for joining us on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Uh, Barry Brown, 8 of 13, 163 yards and three touchdowns. That means he's got eight touchdowns in two games, including the five he threw against Army JV. Uh, and it's a spectacular comeback. Back, come from behind, come back fashion for Lackawanna College on the road up at Mikey Stadium. Don't forget, this is the first of two home games, or three home games, excuse me, this month for Lackawanna College. How this kind of works out right now is next week, Lackawanna College is home against Monroe College out of New York. That game will take place at 6 p.m. next Saturday afternoon, or next Saturday evening, excuse me. Then they're off the weekend after that before they go on the road down to Shepherd University to take on Hawking College in a neutral site game down in West Virginia. And then from there to, no, to October 30th, where they are home taking on Sussex County, their Region 19 partner, in the final home game of the season for Lackawanna College. After that, it's three straight road games, three tough road games, starting on November 6th, where they're out in Ephraim, Utah, taking on the number one team in the nation, the Snow College Badgers. Then they come back the next weekend and take on the number one team in Division Three, the Nassau County Community College Lions. That game on the road on November 13th before they go down on the road to Millersville, Georgia. Tough one. On November 20th, the uh, the finale for the regular season at Georgia Military College. So not an easy end of the season here for Lackawanna College. Not an easy middle as well because they got a ranked team in Monroe coming in next week. But good opportunities maybe for the Falcons to try to make some progress, if you will, as they get into the second half of the season. They lead right now 40-6 to at halftime on top of the MTI Bison. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more. It's Lackawanna College football here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. We never set out to change the world, but at Lackawanna, we see our graduates doing it every day. In healthcare fields like surgical technology, our graduates are making an impact, not only in their own lives, but in the lives of countless patients and their families changing the world. It's really a simple matter of making life better for others. And there's no better place to start than Lackawanna College. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Visit Lackawanna.edu today. Oil and gas jobs are back. Are you looking for a life-changing experience? Lackawanna College's School of Petroleum and Natural Gas can put you on a path to a lucrative career in the production and delivery of America's energy in just two years. Choose from two degree programs or two certificate programs with internships that give students real world and practical experience in the field. Lackawanna College will give you the education you need to build a career in this exciting industry. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Apply today at Lackawanna.edu. Imagine the innovator you could be tomorrow with an innovative education today from Lackawanna College. Our Level Up program puts high school students on an early college pathway for an easier college transition and faster degree attainment at a dramatically lower cost. That's why Fast Company named us one of the world's most innovative companies. With an education from Lackawanna College, imagine where you'll be tomorrow. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. En Lackawanna College no estamos aquí para cambiar el mundo, pero cambiaremos su forma de pensar, cómo ataca los problemas y supera las limitaciones, cómo se esfuerza por convertir los desafíos en oportunidades. Es una experiencia que cambiará su vida y tal vez entonces puedas cambiar el mundo. Esto cambia la vida. Este es Lackawanna College. 
So welcome back to Scranton's Memorial Stadium. It's still halftime here. Both teams back out on the field getting ready. Let's listen to an interview that was conducted at Media Day with uh, one of the players in the secondary for Lackawanna College, Akeem Snell. Hey, Falcon Nation, back on Falcon Football Media Day, voice of the Falcons, Mike Rickard. Joining us now, safety number 12, Akeem Snell. Akeem, your first really official media day. You were the part of the squad last year, but, you know, it wasn't the same kind of uh, kind of vibe. We were stuck up in the gym. So how has media day been going so far for you, all right? Uh, it's going good. So did you have to get up extra early today to get the hair done and all that stuff, too? I did, I did. <laughs> all right. I had to get in the shower before we came out here. But it's, it's a good experience. I like to see everybody out here in their jerseys before we get on the field and put on pads and everything. Yep. So it's a good experience. Good. And now we mentioned that you play safety, so you have a lot of pressure playing safety here at Lackawanna College because, as you know, we've had some safeties go on and do some really great things at, you know, the Power Five, you know, you know Division One level. So do you take that as, like, a burden, like, oh, my gosh, or, like, you know what, you've seen them, and now you're going to see me. I'm going to be the next great guy. Yeah, honestly, I just want to be the next person in line. Like, this is, to be, to be honest, it's to me, it's like Safety University. Okay, you yeah. You had a great pipeline going on. You had... Risker, Kaiser White, Tig, Reese. Yeah. And I just want to be the next one to come yeah. out of here. With Does that team. motivate you even to, to work a little bit harder? It's like, all right, I really got to you know, take care of work in the classroom because all those guys you mentioned were great students. All those guys you mentioned never missed a workout session. I don't remember you ever missing a workout session or taking a workout session off. You know, does that just give you that extra motivation? Like, you know what? They did it. I'm doing it. Yeah, it, it's definitely a good thing to be motivated by, but I think in general, like, the work ethic, work, work ethic has never been a problem for me. Okay. Great. Like, I've always been the one to take the extra step. Right. Awesome. Like, even when we have extra work, yeah. I'm always there. Yeah. Which is, which is, which is good to see, and it doesn't go unnoticed by myself and, and the rest of the coaching staff. So you spent your summer making some travels, right? You made some, um, some, some camp travels, a little yeah. bit of stuff. Talk about a little bit of that camp experience and how that's going to help, you know, get you ready for this season. Uh, it was a good thing. I played against a lot of good competition. Uh, I got to play against some four stars at the West Virginia camp. At Penn State, I got to guard some of their Mitts and Pitt, it's always a good competition down there being the hometown team. Right. So it's just a nice way to get my name out there a little bit. Now, if they know, do you think they pay a little extra special attention to you if they know it's like, all right, here's Akeem Snell, we don't know much about him, but he's a safety from Lackawanna. So you think that, you know, gave you like a little, like, oh, let's keep our eyes open yeah, for this guy? Yeah, when I went to the West Virginia camp, uh, they seen that I came from Lackawanna and they just, they, uh, from and we've had a great guys, pipeline to West Virginia, you yeah, know, especially from, when you mentioned the whites, you know, mm -hmm. so. From past guys, they, they was like, we have a good, uh, we have a good thing going on with Lackawanna. Yeah, so yeah. So that's always, ex that's always exciting stuff here. Yeah. All right, so just like we did with our interview with Donovan, we're going to skip football. Yes. We're just going to ask you some, you know, some other, you know, personal type questions, just because we want to get to know Akeem Snell, right? So if people are coming down the Memorial Stadium here in Scranton. They want to see the guy, you know, yeah. underneath the uniform. So you mentioned you're from Pittsburgh, PA. What's the favorite thing? What's the thing you like to do most when you're home in Pittsburgh? Uh, at home, if I'm not at the field with my friends, probably just like walk around the city, go to the point or something. Okay. Do you eat at Permanente Brothers? I don't eat at Permanente. You don't eat at Permanente. I don't like. Is that like a tourist thing kind of thing? Is that like people that are out of town? You know, or just like, oh, we got to go to Permanente? Because when I go to Pittsburgh, I go to Permanente Brothers. <laughs> yeah, I've never had Permanente. All right. All right. I've heard that before too. Because even when I've been in Chicago, it's like, oh, I love Chicago deep dish pizza. But yeah. people in Chicago don't like Chicago deep dish pizza <laughs> and stuff too. What's some other sports that you played? Have you played any other sports? You know, in high school or anything? Soccer was my first sport when I was a kid. Okay. Then I then I played baseball. Uh, after Coach Pitts, I stopped playing baseball. Um, basketball came after that. AAU, everything, Metro okay. team, high school. And so you have some basketball skill. Yeah. Can you dunk? Because you know, are you? Yeah. Because yeah, I mentioned all the time Delvin, who is you know like five, five foot seven, eight or five seven or whatever, and you just go on his Twitter or whatever, you just see him you know jumping out of the gym dunking yeah. and stuff. I don't know too. if I could do windmills and everything like oh, that, but but, but you could definitely. Yeah. So we're gonna see you once football season over on the intramural basketball court, you know, playing some three on three and five on five. I'm sure. Yeah, I'll hop in the game. Yeah. Everywhere. So we we mentioned for many birds, you don't need that. So what do you eat? Like what is on your what is on your plate? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. You don't have to talk about good stuff. Like w like your go to meal. What is something you have to eat? My go-to meal or like my favorite thing? Both. All right, my favorite thing is like chicken wings and crab legs. All right. Uh, I eat a lot of big chicken and broccoli. Okay. That's like my mom. Yeah, who could say no to that, right? Akeem Snell there joining the voice of the Falcons, Mike Rickert, talking about his favorite foods from media day. So we're just about ready to get the second half underway. It's Cody on to kick to the MTI Bison. End over end, this ball's gonna get hung up at about the nine yard line is where MTI will pick it up and the Bison return it out to about the 32 yard line. Brought down at 31. 
They mark it right at the 31 with 14.53 to go on the clock. So that's where the Bison will take over for their first possession of the second half, trailing 40 to 6. Two by two. Meisman out of the shotgun. Gets the snap, hand it off. This is Polk running on the left side of the line. Is hit hard by Tyrese Mills, but he picks up a couple. Brought down by the Falcons, Tyrese Mills. Two yard pickup there for Polk. Ten first downs for MTI in that first half. Second and eight. Again, they go two by two. They've pretty much been two by two or three by one out of the shotgun this entire game. Haven't really changed that up too much. Falcons show one safety. Polk running again. This time it was O'Neill that came up to make the play. Polk is going to pick up. As Polk lost his uh, helmet there as well. They gave him. They gave him three on that. We'll bring up third down. It's third down. They have not converted their last five third downs after starting three for four. Two by two again. Falcons have one high safety in TJ Mountain. Handoff. This is uh, running on the right side, but not really finding much space. Sir Coy Gray on the carry. He maybe got a yard. It's fourth down. So they'll give him one, and the punt team will come on. Palmer and Russell. Matos Cohen, Palmer to return. So Cohen Russell and Delvin Palmer await at their own 25. Matos standing at his own 23 yard line to kick. MTI, I think they were trying to count to make sure they had enough players, but they get called for a delay of game. Now they had been okay, had only had a couple five-yard penalties, but now they're up to eight on the game. And that'll move them back to the 32-yard line, make it fourth and nine. Again, Cohen Russell and Delvin Palmer are back to receive. High snap, Matos brings it down. Kick on the way, high. Spiraling. Palmer drops this one back at his own 23 yard line. Now Palmer has to pick it up and try to create. And he's taken down right at the 22 yard line. So nowhere to go with 12 14 to go here in the third. Falcons take over from their own 22-yard line. And we got a new quarterback. Brayden Hawkins out there. So here's our first look today at Brayden Hawkins. He played a little bit in the game against Army when Barry Brown was out with injury. So now Hawkins getting some extended run here. Two to the top, one to the near side. Looks like that's Edwards to his right. He's going to throw, and it's behind his intended receiver, Josh Dodd. Hawkins, a sophomore, Charlotte, North Carolina. A bounce back from or what they call a bounce back from Akron. Came back to Lackawanna to get himself straightened out. 
Handoff this time to Edwards. Edwards on the carry. And Isaiah's got nowhere to go, and that's going to bring up third and ten. Falcons are three for four on third downs. Receiver to the near side, two to the top. Hawkins out of the shotgun. Back he goes. Steps up, looks down, throws it down the left side. Has it complete? And a first down to Delvin Palmer. So able to connect there. Thirty-three yard gain. Down. On the pass completion. Palmer now with three catches over 100 yards. Running is Edwards. Nice little shake to get to the outside. Isaiah Edwards is a first down inside the 35. And still on his feet on the sideline making people miss. Cuts to the middle of the field inside the 20. He's still up. He goes backwards and now dives forward across the 20. Isaiah, Isaiah Edwards. Come on, Terrier. 25-yard run for Isaiah Edwards. As a player down for MTI after that sparkling run from Isaiah Edwards. First and 10 from the 20 now for Lackawanna College. Back-to-back -back first downs. Braden Hawkins gets the call from the sideline. He's got Dodd to the near side. Foray alone to the top. No, he's got Co Cohen Russell in the slot with Foray. Purdy the tight end. Quick pass out to Cohen Russell. Makes the first man miss. Now Cohen Russell darts to his left. Has a first down inside the 10. There's a flag out, so hold on. Cohen Russell. There is a down on the field. This might be holding against the Falcons. Officials getting the call, yeah. Hold, I'm gonna say Alfonso Ferre held on the far side. 10th penalty against the Falcons. So that happened a little downfield, so they're going to push it back to the 27 yard line. So try again. One to the top, two to the near side. Now they go to Russell on this side. Instead, Cohen Russell able to almost get around a defender. That's just a good tackle, just forcing him out. Devin Martin, probably a touchdown saving tackle there as Russell almost broke free. They're going to mark him down to the 17. 10 yard pickup. Now they, they move the ball back to the 19, so it's an 8 yard. They had it marked to the 17, but they moved back to the 19. Handoff, DeAndre Scott up the middle, has a first down inside the 10 and tripped up around the seven. Should be a 12 yard pickup. So DeAndre Scott gets in, another first down for the Falcons, now over 16. Edwards coming on as it's first and goal from the seven yard line. And it's going to be a run for Edwards on the left side. He's in for a touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. Isaiah Edwards on the carry for seven yards and the Falcons touchdown. Edwards in from seven yards out. With 9.20 to play. So a little under three minutes there. 2.54 to be exact. Yeah. 
So here's the snap, the hold down, the kick on the way. That one's up and good. 47-6 to six is the score of Lackawanna College on top of MTI. This is Lackawanna College football on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Each one of us has a dream. The challenge in today's world is how to achieve it. Now, more than ever, that's the case. Don't fall behind on your dreams or your college education. You can take your general education classes in English, math, and social science locally at Lackawanna College. Our credits transfer to most colleges so you won't fall behind. Call Lackawanna College today to find out how you can stay home, stay safe, and still pursue your college education. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. So welcome back to Scranton's Memorial Stadium where it's the Falcons on top, 47-6 to over MTI. First home game of the season for Lackawanna College. It's been pretty impressive throughout after uh, a dodgy first couple minutes. for the Falcons, especially on defense. So here's the kick. It's end over end. Hung up in the air right at the 20-yard line, and one of the up men had some trouble with it and just gets on top of it right at the 22 with 9.18 to play. First and 10, Bison from their own 22. So they had a three and out on their first possession. We'll see what the Bison can do here on possession number two of the half. Because the Lackawanna College defense has really put the clamps down after a tough first couple possessions. They've been on top of it since. Back, Meisman throws over the middle. It's complete. It's a first down right at the marker, it looks like. Meisman's pass. Brought down by Keno Holmes. Keno Holmes on the stop. Sky Lewis was the one who caught it. Ten yard pickup on the play. And a first down. Meisman throws far side. Ooh, and a pass was dropped and the lumber was laid in the secondary. Shaken up as the receiver but it's an incomplete pass. Second and 10 from the 32 yard line after they picked up the first down. Gonna be a handoff, this a run up the middle and that's a nice little chunk of change picked up out to the 40 and eight yard pickup for Polk. Brings up third down. Quick snap. Polk, handoff, running on the right side. He might have that. That's a good spot that they're going to give him. Yep, official says first down, and that's what it is. Two-yard pickup for Polk. 8.28 to go. Clock moving. 47-6 to score. Out of the shotgun. Snap, back, throws, near side, complete. Now slipping and still on his feet. Now the officials are going to call him down. Sincere Gill made the catch but lost his footing. Loss of two on the play. Next up, MTI is actually home against Atlantis University before they go back out on the road against Butler and North American University. Then they're home again against Jacksonville Athletic Academy as the handoff. Trying to run back to the line of scrimmage and getting there is Polk. He picks up two. They've used him pretty exclusively. Then they got ASA Miami on the road on November 6th and the, a bye week on the 13th before they end it on the road against Iowa Western. 
So Butler on there as well. That's a tough game. We know ASA Miami's pretty good too. Good slate of games in your first season if you're MTI. Eisman back, floats it, looking far side. Has it complete to Sincere Gill, who gets out of bounds at the 35 in Falcon territory. Nice looking pass. 22-yard pickup on the play. And much like the beginning of the first half, the beginning of the second half, slowly and methodically, the Bison moving the ball down the field. Polk hit right at the line of scrimmage. He's going to pick up about a yard to the 34. And a stoppage by the officials for an injury. There's a Falcon down. Training staff runs out. Coach Duda making the long walk out too to see what's going on. Didn't see who the number was for the Falcons is down. About to help him up. Jamon McNeil was the injured Falcon. He seems a little shaken up, but seems okay otherwise. So he looks no worse for the wear. Second down and nine. McNeil's going to get looked at on the sideline. Falcons playing without Jalen Ring today, who got hurt in the game against Army. Second and nine. Back goes the quarterback, steps up in the pocket, now trying to escape to his right, looks downfield, has a man running open, and it is complete. Did he come down with it? Yep, at the 11-yard line. That's a heck of a throw. 23 yards on the completion. Miles on the catch. Handoff. This is Polk. Polk, the ball carrier. Who is the seven man? Yep, and Give him a yarn to the ten. Rashawn Lawrence on the tackle. At the half. Yeah. Two second and eight. Second and a long eight coming. Tell you what, I've been impressed with Meisman. And his way to move around in the pocket looks quickly, throws it over the middle, it's complete, and it's a touchdown for the Bison. Meisman able to connect with Miles for the touchdown pass. Miles for a Bison touchdown. From 10 yards out. Boy, that. That, uh, that touchdown drive resembled their first touchdown drive of the game. Pretty methodical down the field. And Meisman, who has a touchdown run. Montos on the tip of the PAT. Has a touchdown pass as well. 5.28 to go here in the third. Eleven plays on that drive. Kick is up and good. 47-13 is the score. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more. It's Lackawanna College Football on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Oil and gas jobs are back. Are you looking for a life-changing experience? Lackawanna College's School of Petroleum and Natural Gas can put you on a path to a lucrative career in the production and delivery of America's energy in just two years. Choose from two degree programs or two certificate programs with internships that give students real-world and practical experience in the field. Lackawanna College will give you the education you need to build a career in this exciting industry. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. Apply today at lackawanna.edu. So welcome back to Scranton's Memorial Stadium, where it is Lagawana College 47, the MTI Bison 13, after a pretty impressive 11 play, 78 yard drive that takes three minutes and 50 seconds from MTI. 
So Matos will be on to kick. Matos on to kick. Looks like Cohen Russell is back, as is Delvin Palmer. <laughs> They wait. Here's the kick. End over end. Russell tracks this back into the end zone, and he's going to bring it out from the end zone. A couple yards deep. Cohen Russell breaks one tackle. Now breaks a few more. Has a couple blockers in front. Cohen Russell trying to make his way up the field. Chased down from behind by Sincere Gill, but Cohen Russell gets across midfield and brings this one out to the 45-yard line they're going to mark him of MTI. MTI 45, first and 10 Falcons. Your winning 50-50 ticket number 9870199. Once again, your 50-50 ticket. So first and 10 coming for the Falcons from the MTI 45-yard line after a 55-yard return for Cohen Russell. Russell and Delvin Palmer have uh, had the space to operate on special teams. And for the third time today, Lackawanna College starts in plus territory. Braden Hawkins, the quarterback, once again, will hand it off, running on the right side, and then trying to cut back up the field is Antoine Squire. Squire ends up picking up a first down inside the 35, down to the 30, 40, depends on where they spot him. It's either 11 or 12. Make it 11 to the 34. So Squire, a good looking run there. Push a man in motion. Hand off. Squire once again. This time he's met right at the line of scrimmage. He does grab a couple. Antoine Squire on the carry, gain of two. Give him two to the 32 yard line. Brings up second and eight. Braden Hawkins out there. Receiver to the near side. He's got three to the top now. One back to his left. Out of the shotgun for Hawkins. 4.09 to go, third quarter. Handoff. This is DeAndre Scott. That's a first down. There's a flag that comes out inside the 25. DeAndre Scott on the carry. So Scott picks up the first down, but we'll check the flag. Probably a hold against the Falcons. Seemed like it happened downfield, too. So hold against Lackawanna College. Happening from, looks like from the line of scrimmage. So from the 32-yard line. So 10-yard penalty. Puts it back on the 42. Makes it second and 18. Hawkins gets the call from the sideline. 47-13, it's Lackawanna College on top. One receiver near side, three to the top. Shotgun, Hawkins back. Looking to the left, running out of time. Now runs to his right, has to throw it down for Scott on a, almost a wheel route. Now Hawkins was hit in the backfield, and a flag comes out. Pressure was coming from Salim Hill. Roughing the passer is the call. That's a 15-yard penalty, and that will gift Lackawanna College a first down. So that should move the sticks or that should move the line of scrimmage up to this 27 yard line. After the penalty. Lackawanna College running players on and off. Karan Butler, sophomore from Norristown out there now. Butler in the slot to the top. 
They got three receivers to the top here. Braden Hawkins has a tight end to the right side of the line and overholts. He's going to hand it off. This is DeAndre Scott. He cuts to his left. He's hit from behind and taken down. That was close to dangerous. Now flag comes out late. That was a tackle from behind by Derek Harris. Now let's see. I think this one, personal foul horse collar is the call against MTI. And that's another automatic first down. So the horse collar penalty. Penalty results in another Falcons first down. Moves it to the 14. It's a 13 yard penalty when all is said and done. First and 10 from the 14. Quick pass out to DeAndre Scott. A little too quick from Braden Hawkins. Second and 10 from the 14, 2.45 to play. 47-13 is the score. Receivers in tight to the line. Handoff, Scott running right up the middle. DeAndre, Scott is into the end zone, but guess what? Another flag. And this one might be going against Lackawanna College. This has not been a very clean in terms of penalties second half. That's the 12th penalty against Lackawanna College. It's gonna come from the 14. So holding all the way back to the 24. I got 107 yards on 12 penalties for Lackawanna College in this game. Not something Coach Dude is going to like seeing. Two to the near side, one to the top. Shotgun again for Lackawanna College. Back goes Brayton Hawkins, second and forever. Throws it over the middle. This one is caught. Nice catch by Karan Butler. To the nine-yard line. So they're able to connect with number 89. That was Karan Butler. Quick and pass complete. The Falcons, Karan Butler. So a 15 yard pickup and it brings up third down. And they get the snap, quick pass, far side, sideline and it's incomplete, intended for Colby Young. So after the penalties and everything else, a lot of time comes off the clock, or a good amount of it anyway, but Lackawanna College will be forced to kick the field goal from 25 yards out. Now, Cody is kicking into the wind. So he's going to have to put some power behind this. 25. Snap. Hold. Kick on the way. That one is good. Good. No flags, and the 25-yard field goal's in. It's 50 to 13. Lackawanna College on top of MTI here on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. Each one of us has a dream. The challenge in today's world is how to achieve it. Now, more than ever, that's the case. Don't fall behind on your dreams or your college education. 
you can take your general education classes in English, math, and social science locally at Lackawanna College. Our credits transfer to most colleges so you won't fall behind. Call Lackawanna College today to find out how you can stay home, stay safe, and still pursue your college education. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. So welcome back to Scranton's Memorial Stadium. 50 to 13, Lackawanna College on top of MTI with 129 to go here in the third quarter. Three thirty-seven off the clock on that field goal drive. Here's the kick, end over end. Picked up around the seven yard line or so. Moving forward with it, the ball might have come free. Lackawanna College comes away with it. What are they gonna say? No, they're gonna say they're down. And that looked like Treshawn Washington that was hit and lost it, but it's first and 10 from their own 24 for MTI, so a break for them with 123 to go here in the third. So first and 10 from their own 24-yard line. Meisman handoff running left side. This is Polk. He's been uh, the workhorse, if you will, so far. Picks up a couple. Out to the 27, a run of about three. That's his 20th carry for Polk in this game. He's been busy. Second and seven after the three yard pickup. Snap, play action, throw over the middle, tipped in the air, ooh, that was dangerous and almost intercepted, but it drops harmlessly to the turf. It's third down. That will bring up third down. Third and about seven coming here. Back, Meisman looks to his right, under duress, and down he goes. Brought down to the backfield by the Falcons, Rashawn Lawrence. Rashawn Lawrence in on the stop. And all the way back to the 19 yard line, so a loss of eight on the play. It's fourth down. So fourth and forever, and the Falcons about to force a three and out. Delvin Palmer and Cohen Russell back to receive. I wonder, now they're gonna have to get this play off. The play clock is slightly ahead of the game clock, so they have to get this one off. We're on a player on late with three seconds. I don't know if they're going to get this one off. Play clock runs out, and the officials blow it dead. Delay of game called against MTI. That's the 11th penalty called against the Bison. Five yard penalty, brings it back to the 14 yard line. Here's the snap, and it's almost blocked, but it is away, spiraling kicked. Picked up by Palmer at the 40. Delvin Palmer jogs, now gets into a sprint. Has a couple blocks, gets to the second level. Delvin Palmer gets another nice block, but a penalty flag comes out at the end of the quarter here. We'll check the flag. Might be a blindside block coming here against the Falcons. So we'll see what the flag is going to be. Blindside block called against the Falcons. So we'll sort this out 
As we get ready for the fourth quarter, 50 to 13 the score. Lackawanna College on top of MTI. You're watching Lackawanna College football on the Lackawanna College YouTube channel. En Lackawanna College no estamos aquí para cambiar el mundo, pero cambiaremos su forma de pensar, cómo ataca los problemas y supera las limitaciones, cómo se esfuerza por convertir los desafíos en oportunidades. Es una experiencia que cambiará su vida y tal vez entonces puedas cambiar el mundo. Esto cambia la vida. Este es Lackawanna College. Each one of us has a dream. The challenge in today's world is how to achieve it. Now, more than ever, that's the case. Don't fall behind on your dreams or your college education. You can take your general education classes in English, math, and social science locally at Lackawanna College. Our credits transfer to most colleges so you won't fall behind. Call Lackawanna College today to find out how you can stay home, stay safe, and still pursue your college education. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. All right, so they eventually sorted things out here. It's a 10-yard penalty, and Lackawanna College will start from their own 50, or from the 50-yard line. First down, 10 Falcons. With 15 minutes on the clock, because the fourth quarter is about to get underway. Braden Hawkins still the quarterback. Play action, throws it, looking down the near side. Hit as that one came in. Yeah, that's pass interference. Pass. Officials more than happy to throw the flags on that. So that'll be a 15-yard penalty. And there is a flag in the secondary, too. Hold on. Pass intended for Nathaniel Edwards. Pass interference will go up against the Bison, but there's a flag just directly behind the, where the defensive line would be, too. So, yeah, pass interference is the call. Oh, offsetting penalties is the call. So they'll replay the down. A legal man downfield. Call against Lackawanna College. So the penalties will offset and they'll replay the down. And there is a cramp out there for MTI. So we'll take a break. We'll step aside. We'll be back with more. It's Falcons football here on the Falcons YouTube channel. Imagine the innovator you could be tomorrow with an innovative education today from Lackawanna College. Our Level Up program puts high school students on an early college pathway for an easier college transition and faster degree attainment at a dramatically lower cost. That's why Fast Company named us one of the world's most innovative companies. With an education from Lackawanna College, imagine where you'll be tomorrow. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. At Lackawanna College, we never said we could change the world, but we believe our graduates can. That's why we offer programs in healthcare fields like ultrasound technology. Our graduates play a vital role in modern healthcare, using diagnostic technology to help improve the lives of their patients, making a difference in people's lives. That's what changing the world is all about. And it all starts at Lackawanna College. Visit Lackawanna.edu today. This is life-changing. This is Lackawanna College. So the injured Bison seems to be trying to shuffle off under his own power there. A little bit of a cramp. So offsetting penalties will replay the down. Lackawanna College from their 50-yard line, from right of midfield. Two to the near side, one to the top. Still Braden Hawkins out there. Tyler Overholtz, the tight end to the right side. Handoff running up the middle now trying to cut to the outside and making one man miss but loses his footing and backs up and falls that run from Jaquai Bishop. Loses two on the play. Two receivers go to the top. Leon Jones, the deep man. One receiver in the slot near side, or in, in the slot to the top, one receiver to the near side. 
Handoff, this is Bishop. Bishop spins out of trouble initially. He's going to pick up about three. Bishop on the carry. Give him three to the 49. Third and nine. Third down coming, third and nine. Overholtz will check out. Two to the top. Two to the near side. Out of the shotgun for Hawkins. Back. Looks, looking to the left side, throws it near side, has it complete, inside the 35, a Falcon first down to the 31. Good looking pitch and catch there with Jawan Hall. So Hall comes down with a catch. They'll give him 19 yards. And a first down. Handoff running on the left side and still on his feet is Jaquai Bishop. He should have another first down into the red zone, down to the 12, an 18 yard pickup. First down. So quick pace, or pace quickening now here as uh, they try to hand it off to Bishop, but. Everything's blown dead. Timeout taken by MTI. So the Bison want to talk things over. 12.48 to go. 50 to 13 is the score. Let's see if we can try to get you some updates on uh, what's going on. Throughout the NJCAA in football action today. No, Independence leads Highland 6-0 out in Kansas right now. Dodge City over Fort Scott, 27-20. Iowa Western, 49 to nothing over ASA Miami. That game at halftime. So Iowa Western continues their impressive run. Monroe College doesn't play till later tonight at 6. Iowa Central's playing Air Force Prep in Iowa. We don't have a score on that one just yet. Sus Sussex and Nassau getting together, and Snow was down in Georgia taking on Georgia Military. But we don't have a score there. Hawkins. Handoff. Bishop runs this one up the middle inside the 10. Pickup of about three. Hawkins, quick pass. Out to the near side is complete to his receiver. Hawkins pass complete to Ryan Downer. Downer really doesn't have anywhere to go with it, though. Maybe a pickup of one. Brings up third down. Hawkins, under duress, throws it, corner of the end zone. Ooh, that was a nice looking pass, but couldn't connect with Downer, put it in a good spot. But can't hit Downer. And Chikati comes back out with the field goal unit with 11.44 to go here in the contest. Cam Chikati on to attempt field goal. Very the hole. So this looks like a 28-yard field goal. Middle of the field and the wind at his back. Snap is good, hold down, kick on the way. Chicote puts that one right down the pipe and through. Now flag comes out late for a late hit on MTI. So the 28-yard field goal is up and good. 
Scotty having a good game. Three field goals today. Officials say field goal is good, and there is a personal foul on Lackawanna College. Well, he pointed towards Lackawanna College, but I think it. this official's done this a couple times where he's pointed the wrong way. So we'll see if that's what's actually the call here. It creates a little confusion for us upstairs. Yeah, they're putting the ball on the 50. So that one went against MTI. Thirteenth penalty against the Bison so far in this contest. And Camp Chicote will kick from the midfield stripe. Three field goals for Camp today. 53 to 13. A couple players back to receive here for McDougal Technical Institute. MTI out of Florida. Jacoby puts this one right through the back of the end zone. Eleven forty to go in the game. MTI will start from the twenty five yard line. And a lot of different players out there for the Falcons now on defense. Gabe Gray, Dimitri DiPietro out there. Looks like Nigeria Reed. Malcolm Moore, a couple players that maybe don't see a ton of playing time out there for the Falcons here. Handoff, running right side and cutting back up the middle, but not really much to speak of on that run. Yeah, that was Lewis on the carry and no gain. Two by two from the 25. Back. Looking to the left. Now under duress and down he goes. DiPietro on the stop. So big play there. Down in the backfield by the Falcons, number 47. Dimitri DiPietro on the stop. Oh. And it's third down. A nine yard loss on the play. Fifth sack of the game. So the special teams specialist comes up with a big defensive play there. Now throw going over the middle is complete at the 30. A flag came out as the ball got snapped. So we'll see what the call is here. There's a chance it's on the defense if they let the play go on. Encroachment called against Lagawana College. They're going to decline the penalty? No, they wouldn't decline the penalty because they didn't pick up the first down. It's not a first down. The official signaled first down that they declined it, but it'd be fourth down. It's and I don't think the official realizes. Down. It's for, why would they decline the penalty? <laughs> So wait a minute. Yeah, the officials are going to come together here because I don't think the, the lead official realized that they would probably accept the penalty. They'd rather accept it and do third down over again than, than decline it and have to face fourth and four. Yeah. 
All right, so some discussion here from the officials. They've got from the 16 to the 31. This would move the ball from the 16 to the 21. So, I mean, even if he accepts it, it makes it third down. It, it, it wouldn't be tacked on to the end of the play. So it would make it third down from the 21 as opposed to fourth down from the 31. So here they go. They're going to, looks like they're moving the stick back. Now it should be from the 21 yard line because they were at the 16. Yeah, the sideline officials seem to have it figured out. Okay, so now they figured it out. So it's encroachment. Offside against the Falcons. Makes it third down at the 21. Okay, now we understand. Now it's a third down. Officials still uh, discussing, making sure they have everything correct. Two by two. Shotgun. Third and 14. Meisman back. Looking under duress, gets away from two defenders, runs into his own blocker, and then is taken down right around the 22-yard line. Actually, they're not even going to give him a yard. They're going to say no gain. Give him one yard on the pickup. And the punt is coming for MTI. Again, the Bison at home against Atlantis University next week in their first home game as a junior college football team. Falcons back at home next week against Monroe College in what's going to be a big matchup for the Falcons as a flag is thrown. Another delay of game. Called against MTI. Fourteenth penalty called against the Bison. Twenty-nine penalties in total in this game. Fifteen against Lackawanna College. Fourteen against MTI. Snap, kick, wobbler, spins out to the left side and is going to bounce it about, or no, going to bounce down the sideline and roll out around the 44 yard line. So, Lackawanna College takes over in plus territory once again with 8.48 to go in the game. From the 45-yard line of MTI, Hawkins still out there at quarterback. Braden gets the snap. Handoff. This is Jaquai Bishop running on the right side. Up the middle, cuts to his right, down at the 41 to pick up a four. Second and six from the 41 yard line. Three receivers come to the near side. 
They run Butler over to the other side. So now it's two to the near side, one to the top. 17 seconds on the play clock. Plenty of time for the Falcons. Hand off. This is Bishop running on the right side. Makes one man miss, and a flag comes out. And Bishop is tackled. Check the flag. That looks like it came in the area of holding. And that's what it is. Holding against the Falcons. Where are they marking this one from? Hold against Lackawanna College. They're going to mark it from... Looks like from the line of scrimmage. Yep. So 10-yard penalty. Second and 16. Under eight minutes to go. Hawkins. Play action. Near side. Pass is complete. Five-yard pass completion to Downer. Third down coming. Third and 11 for Lackawanna College. Three to the top, one to the near side. Back goes Hawkins. Steps up in the pocket, is hit from behind and taken down. A sack for MTI. A three yard loss on the play. Fourth down. Only the second three and out for the Falcons. And it snapped a streak of seven straight drives that ended in points. Snaps a little high. Taken down. End over end. And it goes through the returner's hands and into the end zone. And thankfully for MTI, it rolls out of the back of the end zone. So, the Bison takeover with 6.26 to go. Now, wait a minute. It hit the hands. It hit the hands of the returner. That's right. The, the returner, the officials are talking about it. If he ever, I guess if he ever had control, no, they're going to say no. He didn't have, he never had control of the football. Never had control of the football. So that's why it's not a safety for those of you scoring at home. But the ball goes out of the back of the end zone and they place it at the 20. So here's the snap out of the shotgun. Looks like the reserves are in for MTI, and surprise, surprise, another flag comes out. Right, the ball carrier, the penalty marker on the field. And Sir Coy Gray was the carrier. Face mask. The call against Lackawanna College. And that's going to be an automatic first down. It's the 15 yard variety. Fifty three to thirteen. Under six to play. Snap back. Looking to get rid of it and tackled for a loss back of the thirty. Down. New quarterback Tyrese McCon. Isaiah Aduro. Isaiah Aduro getting the stop. And there's an injured Falcon down. So 
So they're going to say that's a loss of five back to the 30. So McCon, who checked into the game, is sacked, but there's an injured Falcon down. Let's try to see who that might be. It might be Breon Askins. Thought it looked like a 40 that's down. Try to get confirmation on that. So the Falcons, 53 to 13, 549 to go here in the game. At this point, just want to get out of here without any more risk of injury to anybody. So they're still checking out there. Now Coach Reese and Coach Duda out there. Check on the injured Falcon. They're able to get him to his feet. And yeah, that looks like Askins. It's a round of applause as he comes off. A couple Falcon players come out to help their, their teammate. Brian Dallas and Nazir Dean carrying Askins to the sideline to get him looked at. So after the sack, second and 15 from their own 30. Con the handoff running up the left side and breaking a few tackles and <laughs> running into the umpire. Out to the 41 and 11 yard pickup for Gray. Umpire almost had to make a stop there. It's third down. Third and four coming here. Handoff. Gray again explodes up the middle. First down for MTI into Falcon territory and out across the 40 down to the 39 yard line. <laughs> 20 yard pickup on the play. Under five to play. Handoff. Gray. This time he's hit from behind and thrown backwards for a loss. Isaiah Oduro on the stop. No gain, they'll say. One receiver to the top. They bunch three receivers to the near side out on the edge. Lackawanna College able to get around it on the screen. Uh, pass is incomplete anyway. You can't pass, incomplete, intended for Gill. They tried to throw the quick screen to the near side because they had the numbers advantage, but Lackawanna College got around the blocks. Third down and ten. Forced an incomplete pass anyway. Another third down coming. Six of 15 on third downs. Back. McCon looking to the near side up in the air and I don't know, did he come down with that one? No, they're gonna say it hit the ground incomplete. That looked like it hit the turf as he came down on top of it. It's close. It's fourth down and ten. But it brings up fourth and ten from the 39. With 4-10 to play. And decision time for MTI. Looks like they're going to go for it. They're one of three on fourth down. Shotgun. 
back. McCon is hit and just collides with a few Falcons in the backfield. So Lackawanna College comes up with a stop and takes him down at the 48-yard line, a loss of nine on the play. So a turnover on downs. Andrew Vines in on the stop, and that's a Falcons first down. Andrew Vines in on the stop there. Kino Holmes on a blitz gets the stop as well. So Lagawana College takes over with 4.05 to go from their own 48-yard line. Can the Falcons just hang on, run some four-minute offense, and finish the game off here? Play action. Hawkins, quick pass out to the near side. Uh, receiver in the flat, breaking a few tackles and close to the first down marker. Nice run by Nazir Armstrong. Nazir Armstrong. They're going to give him eight to the 44-yard line. Oh, they're going to give him 10, excuse me, and a first down. They try the handoff on first down and swallow it up with nowhere to go. I think that was DeAndre Scott that tried to carry that one. No space to run with, though. as he's knocked down for a loss of four. Second and 14. Fake the handoff, throw over the middle. Oh, he had his receiver, but just led him a little bit there to Hawkins. Hawkins. for Jawan Paul. Third down. Third down coming. Five of nine on third downs is Lackawanna College here. And there's a penalty on, the, on Lackawanna College anyway. Legal man downfield. I mean, do you decline? Yeah, I, th I think you decline if you're MTI. Got him in third and long anyway. Now they're going to accept it. So they accept the penalty. It's not third down. Second and long. Second and 19 from the looks of it. Back goes Hawkins. Hawkins looking downfield, trying to throw his man open. Oh, he just could not get there. Had Jawan Hall running there, couldn't find him. And now that brings up third down. Third and 19 coming under three to play. 53 to 13 the score. Falcons comfortably in front. Just trying to finish this thing off. Hawkins with a back to his left. Low snap, picks it up. Hawkins steps up into the pocket, is hit from behind for the second time and taken down for a sack, a loss of one on the play. So a loss of one. And a punt coming. So they started in plus territory. But the Falcons can't take advantage of it. Or close to plus territory anyway. Can't take advantage of it. Bit of a looping snap. This one's away from Chicote. Picked up around the 15 yard line. And the Falcons eventually get the stop 
about the 21 yard line. So we're under two minutes to play. Alex Rodriguez in on the tackle. As MTI takes over with 154 to go First down, on their own 24. Three to the near side, one at the top, shotgun. McCon from his own 21. Back he goes. Looks, steps up in the pocket, under duress. Now trying to run away. Gets away from one tackler and loses his footing. He might have had a chance to get a couple more. They'll give him one yard from the look of it to the 22. Second and nine. Shotgun, McCon, quick pass out to the left side, hit as he caught it. One yard pickup. Looks like that was Gill on the catch. Third down on the way, third and eight. Under a minute to play, so this should probably do it. Back, McCon steps up, throws it to the left side. It's incomplete. Fourth down on the way for Lackawanna College. Forty-four seconds to go. They have all three timeouts remaining. Actually, 44.9, so just a shade under 45. Palmer and Cohen Russell on to return. Here's the punt. Hits the wind. Bounces at the Falcon 49-yard line and skips out of bounds. And some pushing and shoving and now some more pushing and shoving. Officials trying to separate everybody. Stay on the bench. Falcon coaching staff trying to keep everybody on the bench. No one ran out. And now the officials got some stuff to sort out. Falcon's going to take over with 37 seconds left. But we'll see from where. Multiple flags come out. The official's having a conference right in front of the Bison's bench. All right, so the official about to dead ball personal foul against Lackawanna College. That's it. So the Falcons pick up another 15-yard penalty. Ball back to the 40-yard line. So that's where the Falcons will take over. From their own 40, game in hand, and the lineup in the victory formation. First and 10 from their own 40. Hawkins will back up. And that should do it. Okay, and there was an incomplete pass 
Both teams shake hands out on the field. Everybody else going to line up and do so at midfield. And that'll be the final score. 53 to 13. The Falcons move to 3 and 1 on the season and into a date at home next Saturday night against Monroe College, the ranked Monroe College. That should be a fun one between the Falcons and Monroe. So look out for that one next Saturday night. The final score, 53 to 13. Lackawanna takes it over MTI. And for everybody at Lackawanna College and the Athletic Department, I'm Tom Ferguson, the Sports Information Director. This has been Lackawanna College Football on the Lackawanna College Athletic Network.